KSL FM Midvale, KSL Salt Lake City. This is KSL News Radio, Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 5 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes. And I'm Amanda Dixon. KSL's top story this hour. The man accused of intentionally running over multiple people and driving off is now being investigated for another crash. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is live with details. Adam? Amanda, authorities in Summit County have officially named On Fam as a suspect in a hit and run that happened on Sun Peak Drive and Bear Hollow Drive in Park City that sent one woman to the hospital in early March. Fam is already facing multiple charges of attempted murder in four hit and run cases in the Salt Lake Valley. And on top of that, Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill tells KSL TV he is now screening charges for two other incidents that KSL has helped identify. One of those happened in the avenues near T Street in mid-March. One happened a little over a week before that, 1300 East and 900 South. We continue to bring you updates on this case throughout the morning. Reporting live, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Fatal car crashes are up in construction zones nationwide, but a new study says Utah's number three in the country. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston joins us live with the details. Peter? Tim, the only two states with a higher proportion of fatal car crashes being in construction zones are Texas and Nebraska. That's according to a review of 10 years of crash data by LendingTree. 3.3% of fatal car crashes in Utah happen in these construction zones, and the study finds most of the people killed in these areas are drivers and their passengers. In real numbers, this state saw just under 80 fatal car wrecks between 2012 and 2021 in these work zones. Lending Tree points to a few key safety tips from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. First, always avoid texting and driving. Slow down when you see road workers. And finally, keep an eye out for signs and instructions. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Four people are recovering in the hospital after a multi vehicle crash involving a semi truck on US 6. The driver of the semi is in critical condition. The highway was blocked for several hours. This comes just one day after a six-year-old girl was killed on the highway. KSL's top national stories this hour. The IDF says the largest number of humanitarian aid trucks since the beginning of the war entered the Gaza Strip this week. Many are wor worried that the pause in fighting in southern Gaza may be laying the groundwork for military action in Rafah. ABC's Brick Clement has more now from Israel. Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. More than 400 trucks made their way into the area. Family members of hostages held by Hamas got a private audience with the Pope this week. One of them, Ashley Waxman Bakshi, said the Pope was warm and welcoming and even used the word evil to describe the terrorist organization. He is working in his own channels um, to, to help with, with releasing the hostages and that he is committed to it. Um, and he called Hamas evil, which they are. That meeting took place yesterday at the Vatican. A Utah who lost his hands in an electrical accident visited Ukraine to help wounded soldiers adapt to their prosthetics. Sam Matangi tells KSL-TV the invasion has taken a terrible toll. There's been 20,000 brand new amputees since the start of the war. Matangi says he was able to find some success stories only five days into his trip. An Idaho man is in custody accused of planning a suicide attack in the name of ISIS. The FBI arrested 18-year-old Alexander Scott Mercurio on Monday. Investigators believe Mercurio may have been motivated by the attack last month in Russia, where an ISIS group took responsibility for killing 144 people at a concert hall complex near Moscow. Mercurio is currently in custody awaiting his initial court appearance. He faces a maximum of 20 years in federal prison if convicted. That's ABC's Christiane Cordero reporting. Time for our first look at First Look Traffic. Andy Farnsworth, good morning, sir. Good morning, Tim. We start off in good shape on our roadways. No crashes to pass along at this point. In fact, not a lot of heavy traffic to deal with either and uh, not 
seeing any windy conditions or weather conditions affecting you either so far. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Opening arguments for the trial of Chad Daybell will begin tomorrow. KSL TV's Debbie Worthen has more now that the jury has been selected. According to KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis, it's today some jurors may actually decide how they really feel about Chad Daybell and the crimes he's charged with. Tonight, those 10 men and eight women go to bed knowing that they will spend what's expected to be the next few months with a man's life in their hands. Daybell is accused of murdering the two children of his wife, Lori Vallow Daybell, and his late wife, Tammy Daybell. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Boise, preparing to cover that trial alongside KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. Come back to Utah's Morning News tomorrow for the latest from Boise. You can also follow our complete trial coverage at KSLNewsRadio.com. A man from Provo had the idea to collect used eclipse glasses, and his effort went viral. Roger Sarkis tells KSL-TV his side business got thousands of emails on Eclipse Day alone. MasterCard, the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, multiple universities, hospitals. In fact, today I reached out to the Hawaii Department of Education. Sarkis is planning on sending those used glasses to underserved communities and schools in Hawaii and Latin America for the next solar eclipse in October. Many states, including Utah, are exploring the benefits of virtual power plants. If you haven't heard of them, KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera explains. Residents and businesses who have solar panels installed can opt into Rocky Mountain Power's WattSmart battery program. The energy that's stored on those batteries can then be used to balance flows on their grid and draw power for their home or office in emergency situations. According to John Whitesides with Rocky Mountain Power, there are roughly 4,000 batteries in Utah being fed by about 70,000 customers. And then essentially what Rocky Mountain Power does is we utilize those batteries every day um, rather than uh, ramping up generation on a like a thermal plant. This is especially useful during peak hours and higher demand seasons like summer. And companies like Rocky Mountain Power look forward to new solutions. Eric Cabrera. KSL News Radio. There just isn't anything happening on the roads out there yet this morning. Just a touch of southbound slowing I-15. I'm not even really sure why that's happening, but we'll check your traffic and weather together. Coming up. Spend your workday with a talk show that makes you feel better about the news. Dave and Dejanovic. They have a good dynamic between the two of them. Sometimes I'll take Dave's side and sometimes I'll take Debbie's side. They're great. Dave and Debbie, live from 9 to noon, or podcast the show on the app for KSL News Radio. Les Olson IT is now a Rico graphic arts and production systems dealer. Rico chose Les Olson because of our reputation for superior service and national recognition. Les Olson IT chose Rico graphics because they're the best value compared to other commercial grade printers. Rico excels in high volume, high speed, high resolution, and offers an exciting fifth color. Learn more at lesolson.com. Les Olson IT. It's springtime in the Rockies, and it's time to apply Revive Organic Soil Treatment. A Revive treatment with fertilization, aeration, and good watering is the key to building stronger roots for a healthy, lush green lawn. Revive fertilizes and moves water and nutrients deeper into the soil. Take advantage of spring storms with an application of Revive now. Protect yourself from drought later this summer and skyrocketing water costs. With Revive, if you water two times a week, it's like watering four. Apply Revive Organic Soil Treatment today. It works. Don't be worried. Be ready. KSL News Radio and Be Ready Utah invite you to participate in the world's largest earthquake drill. The Great Utah Shakeout on Thursday, April 18th. Be part of the 1 million people in Utah who will drop, cover, and hold on. And listen to our show, Dave and Dijanovic, for tips on how your family can be ready for any emergency and learn how to keep a cool head. Be Ready Utah with KSL News Radio. Here we are, and On Fam's name is in the headlines again, again today. Mm-hmm. And there may be as many as three other crashes that are being investigated that he may be attached to. Seems like every other day we're learning about more more people who were hit. It's just crazy. Adam Small is going to follow up on that. Of course, he's the man accused of intentionally running over several women and is now in jail. It's 5.09. Time for a look at that drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. What are you going to do all morning if it stays like this, Andy? Oh, we'll find something to look at in the traffic. There's always something. But it's a nice start right now. Traffic from Draper to downtown at the full speed limit with Despite some odd little bit of heavy traffic on the transition from South 15 to go uh, on the collector that uh, then goes to I-80 and SR-201. If you're coming out of Tooele, SR-36 and I-80 both looking great so far. Heather? 
No problems right now through Weber and Davis counties. We've got good speeds and not a lot of traffic on I-15 US-89 and Legacy Parkway. Also a good commute so far on all the city streets with no accidents reported. Eric. In Utah County, no problems on I-15. Uh, we're looking at a 22-minute drive northbound from Springville to Point of the Mountain and getting out into the canyon of Provo Canyon. That's looking good on 189. Uh, there is a crash reported out in Spanish Fork Canyon. This is uh, eastbound. There's a vehicle on fire at the Thai Fork rest stop, uh, and for, for at least for a while, the uh, center lane was closed. There may still be some uh, lane closures there if you're heading out to Price this morning. Rekindle adventure in a place everyone connects with nature. Cedar City, Brian Head. Shopping, dining, museums, spring skiing, tubing, hiking, biking, disc golf, and much more. Level up your adventure. Vis visit cedarcity.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. How about mostly sunny skies today with a high of 58 degrees? Beautiful. 41 overnight with mostly clear skies. Tomorrow's mostly sunny, 63. We're to the 70s by Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Let's see, 36 degrees now, clear skies to start the morning. It was yesterday morning, former President Trump clarified his position on abortion, saying that that is an issue that should be left to the states. Mm -hmm. That did not please some of his supporters who wanted something more definitive. I'm sure. From him. We're going to find out more with Stephen Portnoy just ahead. Stay with us, and remember, you'll always find us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news traffic and weather station. You know that feeling? It's kind of hot in the afternoon, and you hear the air conditioner kick in, and you think, there we go. And then you wait for a bit, but you don't feel any cold yet. So you go put your hand right in front of it, and sure enough, even with all that noise, it's just regular air coming out instead of cold? Whipple that away. Fixing air conditioners that don't make cold is my job. Make your problem my problem. Whipple Service Champions. Call today and ask about our next day installation or visit whipplethataway.com. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financial, specializes in no market risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show and call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing Nothing but upside here at 855-355-SAFE. Jeff Kaplan. When you're online, that's sometimes a source of fourth-hand information. Somebody does the reporting. Another website Googles. They find it. They rewrite it. And by the time you read it, you know the old game telephone. But KSL is a source of primary information. We have reporters on the street. They're out in the field finding out the details. And the difference between online and KSL News Radio night and day. Jeff Kaplan's Afternoon News, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. Do you have three ex-wives and your current trophy wife wants a life insurance policy three times the size of the policies you had to purchase for your previous mistakes? If so, you need to call Big Lou at Term Provider, 800-230-2777. Big Lou is intimately familiar with your problems, and if you're 50 or 60 years old and in reasonably good health, a $1 million policy should only cost about $100 to $200 per month. Big Lou may have a solution for your previous policies as well. You may even save enough money to lighten the load on your new $1 million policy. Remember, call Big Lou. He's like you, except he's only on number two. Call Term Provider at 800-230-2777. That's 800-230-2777. For a million dollars in term life insurance that you can live with, call Big Lou at 800-230-2777. 800-230-2777. KSL News Time, 515. The three things you need to know this hour. First, the man accused of intentionally running over multiple women in the Salt Lake Valley is now being investigated for three more potential cases. I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Small. Second, the two men accused of kidnapping and torturing a man inside their Sandy apartment are now facing felony charges. Police are saying this was not random, but have not given a motive. Third, a look at the drive, traffic, and weather together. Traffic looking great on I-15, coming from Ogden to Salt Lake and from Provo to Salt Lake. The whole stretch, dry and 
and full speed limit. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly sunny and a solid 7 degrees warmer than yesterday. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now 36 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Let's check out top national stories. From ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The FBI says it thwarted what could have been a violent attack on churches in Idaho. Under arrest, an 18-year-old named Alexander Mercurio, who police say had planned to use flame-covered weapons, explosives, knives, and machetes to kill people. Investigators believe Mercurio may have been motivated by the attack last month in Russia, where an ISIS group took responsibility for killing 144 people at a concert hall complex near Moscow. Mercurio is currently in custody awaiting his initial court appearance. He faces a maximum of 20 years in federal prison if convicted. ABC's Christine Cordero. Today is sentencing day for James and Jennifer Crumley, whose son Ethan killed four classmates at his Michigan high school in 2021. The parents convicted of involuntary manslaughter for not stepping in to stop the mass shooting. Prosecutors say they have shown a, quote, chilling lack of remorse. A judge in New York refusing Donald Trump's last-minute appeal to dismiss the Stormy Daniels hush money case or move it out of Manhattan. After teasing that he was likely going to support some sort of nationwide abortion ban, the former president also came out yesterday and said no, he would let the states decide. Trump is facing backlash from both sides after releasing a new statement on abortion, saying the matter should be left up to individual states. Abortion rights have won in all six states where it has been on the ballot, including in conservative states like Kansas, Kentucky, and Ohio. Some Republicans are now criticizing Trump for not endorsing a nationwide ban, including Trump's former vice president. Mike Pence called Trump's statement a slap in the face to the anti-abortion voters who supported him in 2016 and 2020. That's ABC's Andrew Dimbert. After last night's UConn back-to-back championship win in the NCAA title game, Purdue's seven foot four Zach Eady said... You can say whatever you want about me. You can say however I play. You can say whatever, but... Uh, you can never say that I didn't give it my 100% every single time I step on the floor. He's headed to the NBA. This is ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. Former President Donald Trump left some of his supporters confused and others upset after he clarified his stance on abortion. ABC News national correspondent Stephen Portnoy joins us live. He said it's up to the states, right, Stephen? Oh, we don't have Stephen. Oh, shoot. Um, I He said that it, it's up to the states, that the issue should be left up to the states. But I think some of his supporters were expecting him to express an opinion about how abortion should never be legal after a certain number of weeks, that that should be an across-the-board national yeah. rule. I think we've got him now. Uh, Stephen, we were just talking about uh, Trump's statements, but he is at odds with some in his party, including Senator Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham, Mike Pence, the Susan B. Anthony Pro-Life America group, all expressing their disappointment in the former president's statement yesterday that while he's, uh, you know, he, he believes, uh, well, he says this. He says that it should be up to each state to decide abortion laws. And he's personally in favor of exceptions for rape, incest, and the life of the mother. And he stopped short yesterday of calling for a nationwide ban at a set number of weeks. He also called himself proudly responsible for the decision that overturned Roe versus Wade, ending uh, the constitutional right to abortion that was seen for nearly 50 years in the United States. And Democrats seized on that, saying that Donald Trump is defending abortion bans where they exist anywhere in the country. And while he didn't say it, Democrats are saying that if he were presented with an abortion ban passed by the Congress, he would sign it. Uh, the uh, former president himself is, is not happy with the pushback he's been getting from conservative circles. He was lashing out on his social media platform yesterday saying abortion, this is his words, hardliners have seen Republicans losing in places where they should be winning in GOP strongholds. He says his stance that the issue should be left to the states rather than the federal government was the conservative position for half a century. That's interesting. You know, he doesn't usually play it safe, but these, this feels like playing it safe a little. This is definitely uh, an, an assessment in Trump's mind of the politics here. And he simply has said, and he said it explicitly, that he does not believe it's good politics for Republicans to be hardliners, his word, on the abortion issue. Uh, he said that in the state of Florida, where he resides, it's a terrible mistake for the state to pass a six-week abortion ban. And he has not yet said how he'll vote on the ballot in his home state uh, come November. There's a question on the ballot there about expanding the right to abortion in Florida. 
Uh, so uh, it, it, I think this question will continue to hover over the former president. I'm not sure it will necessarily uh, lead to conservatives abandoning Trump. But the big concern that Trump appears to be voicing is the idea that the abortion issue will motivate Democrats and threaten Republicans up and down the ballot, including him. And obviously it's something we'll continue to keep an eye on all the way through uh, November's election. With your help, Stephen, thank you. ABC News National Correspondent Stephen Portnoy helping us out on the In-Depth at 15 to 45. Let's get another look now at traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, it's been a good drive on uh, all the city streets so far in Salt Lake County. Haven't seen any slow spots on Mountain View or Bangor or Redwood yet. I-15 at the full speed limit from Draper to downtown. Only a 20-minute commute through the valley, Heather. It's also about a 30-minute commute, a little less, southbound I-15 from Ogden to downtown Salt Lake City if you're coming through Weber and Davis counties. You also have good speeds on US-89 Legacy Parkway. No problems right now through the mountains on I-84 to and from Morgan. Eric. Along the 215 East Belt, so we've got good movement from 6200 South up to the mouth of Parley's Canyon. If you go into the canyon, that's in good shape going out to the Kimball Junction next to Park City. If you're uh, heading the other direction, the westbounders, uh, there is some uh, slow moving, uh, looks probably semis uh, getting up over the top of Parley Summit. I-15 in Utah County, no problems there. Beat the spring cleaning rush and call Zero Res. Get three rooms plus a hallway. Zero Resified for $99. Visit ZeroRes.com and book your appointment today. Zero Res. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 8 forecast 58 today. Mostly sunny skies. High pressure continues to nudge in from the California coast on Wednesday. 63 sunny skies. 10 above the normal by Thursday. 71. Up to 77 degrees, partly cloudy skies on Friday. We dial it back just a touch on Saturday, 74, mix of sun and clouds, partly cloudy on Sunday, 69. We're down to 62, mostly cloudy, no uh, complaints there by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. We were out watching a grandchild softball game yesterday evening. It, that wind was yeah. biting last night. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm telling her she needs to get more involved with inside sports like <laughs> basketball or volleyball. Uh, 36 degrees now, the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Yeah, yesterday I was walking across campus up at the U. It was about 1230 and it got cold. And I thought, what? and then I remembered, oh, this might be our little bit of the eclipse. Yeah. Is that it got cold for a little bit. It was a big old nothing burger at our house. Yeah, I, Be didn't, I didn't notice anything. Between the clouds and, you know, just a little bite taken out of uh, the sun really was anticlimactic yeah. for our neighborhood, I'm afraid. Did you watch any of the UConn-Purdue uh, game last night? I did not because of the softball game. I didn't either because of the softball. I didn't see it either. Uh, but, you know, this UConn team, I, I was uh, hearing on the way in this morning, and I guess I just didn't realize, all six of their tournament games were won by double digits. They won by 140 points in the tournament. Oh, wow. And last night's win was 15 points. So, so nobody decisive. had come close. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Speaking of basketball, we have some lower bowl tickets to give away to the Jazz game tonight. Just two more home games this season. The Nuggets are in town tonight. You can text the word Jazz right now to 57500 and get in on these tickets. And then at 845 this morning, we'll give you another chance. Good luck on that. And we'll check money news coming up next. We used to argue about whose turn it was to clean the gutters. But then I had Leaf Filter gutter protection installed. Wait, I told you Leaf Filter had free inspections and estimates and a lifetime guarantee. Meaning we never have to argue about whose turn it is to clean the gutters again. But I visited leaffilter.com slash beacon first. No, I did. It doesn't matter who. Visit leaffilter.com slash beacon to schedule your free gutter inspection and get up to 30% off today. See representative for warranty details. Promotion is 20% off plus a 10% senior or military discount. One discount per household. I feel occasional burning and stabbing in my hands as I age. I sometimes feel numbness and tingling in my feet as I get older. It's starting to get in the way of doing what I love. At Nervive, we hear you and we can help. Nervive's clinically studied dose of alpha lipoic acid reduces occasional nerve discomfort in as little as seven days with continued daily use. Now that I know, I'm taking control. Try Nervive Nerve Relief and say yes to healthy nerves. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Alpine Home Medical, we bring wellness home. Do you find it exhausting getting up from your favorite chair every day? Say goodbye to discomfort and hello to a world of ease. Hi, I'm Jay Broadbent with Alpine Home Medical, and you have so many options when buying a lift chair. 
for the highest quality always come to Alpine. Our lift chairs are more than just furniture. They're your ticket to independence yep, and relaxation. Plus, with our spring savings event, we've just marked down some of our chairs that are ready for you to take home. With an unbelievable warranty, you can shop with confidence knowing your comfort is our priority. So stop by any of our 11 locations today and explore our high-quality inventory. Or visit us online at alpinehomemedical.com. That's alpinehomemedical.com. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. If you're a UConn fan, last night's NCAA tournament win means more than bragging rights. Mug Root Beer and its mascot dog are promising a free root beer to fans since a team with a canine mascot, in this case the Huskies, <laughs> won it all. They're promising to share how you get your free drink on TikTok and Insta. Well, it may not feel like it's... Uh, um May not feel like a next time you go to the store. I, I'm confused here. Utah is not one of the worst states for inflation right now. The worst of the worst honor goes to uh, Florida, where the average inflation for the last 12 months is 3.9% driven by an influx of new residents and high insurance costs. Crude oil prices are up more than 17% on the year so far. That's specifically the price of West Texas Intermediate crude. Uh, Brent prices rose about 14% so far this year. Yeah, and we're heading into the busy driving season, spring and so summer get months, even so more. it's going to get mm. yeah, worse, I'm afraid. Futures markets are up, but not by much today. Uh, the uh, Dow just up a fraction. It's up two points. The S&P is up four and a half. The Nasdaq in the green by 31. At least it's a nice drive out there this morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. We'll check traffic and weather together coming up next. Experience classical hits through a new lens with the Utah Symphony's Masterworks Magnified events. The final themed evening of the season is coming up this April. Picture this. You're at the elegant Abravanel Hall in downtown Salt Lake City, dressed to the nines and crafting your own masquerade mask. Then you're swept away by the Utah Symphony's performance of Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. Starting with the masquerade ball, following the romance of the star-crossed lovers and leading to the story's tragic events. Marvel at the projections giving you a close-up of the symphony's performers and the flying fingers of guest pianist Ingrid Fleeter as she plays Ravel's piano concerto. Plus, you'll even hear conversations with the orchestra's expert musicians. It's Masterworks Magnified's Masquerade-themed event, April 26th and 27th. Tickets start at $21 at utahsymphony.org slash magnified. A stranger with a gun fires on two teens, shattering lives. But that's only the beginning of the story. Listen to The Letter at theletterpodcast.com or wherever you get your podcasts. April in Utah means warmer temps, spring runoff, and yes, road work. For every spring surprise, rely on KSL News Radio. Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon cover what happened overnight from 5 to 9. Dave and Debbie and Boyd Matheson have in depth conversation during the day. And Jeff Kaplan takes you home with his trademark minute of news. All season, every day. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. This week's movie show is brought to you by Sound Sleep Medical. Get a free sleep screening and a free sleep consultation by tuning in on Friday morning. Sound Sleep Medical with seven locations in Utah. 529 means traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. And he's back in the traffic center. And traffic rolling through Salt Lake County on I-15, I-80, 21st South Freeway so far. Tooele County get a little bit heavy on SR-36 at a couple of Stansbury Park intersections. But so far, that's about it. Heather? No problems in Weber and Davis counties. We've got good speeds on all the major freeways. Not a lot happening on city streets. You don't have any accidents reported. But I am starting to see a little bit of traffic fill in toward Hill Air Force Base at the south and west gates. Eric? And no difficulties in Utah County. Uh, we are seeing a little bit of uh, activity as you go on University Parkway from Provo into Omer, just as you approach University Avenue and the BYU campus. Uh, otherwise, everything else and uh, looking pretty good. Uh, you got that one accident out uh, in the uh, uh, in Spanish Fork Canyon. Excuse me. Uh, this is at the Ty Fork rest stop uh, for eastbound vehicles. This was actually a vehicle on fire. I'm certain they put it out by now, uh, but just be careful going through there. Is the IRS around? 
harassing you? Are tax problems ruining your life? Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Let's get a look at that forecast. Today will be a high of 58, a little warmer than yesterday. A few clouds, but it's clearing out tomorrow. Just sun and 63. Nothing but sun on Thursday and 70 degrees. And our high for the seven-day forecast is Friday right now. That'll be 77 degrees. We're going to get close to 80 degrees this week. And then we start coming back down the other way, though. Another storm front moves in and we get back into the 60s uh, for the rest of the weekend. But right now, it's still chilly this morning at 36 degrees. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning, KSL News Time, 5.30. KSL's top story this hour. A political commentator known for his anti-transgender uh, views gave a speech at the University of Utah's College of Social Work last night. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more on the speech and its backlash. Peter? Amanda, Daily Wire commentator Michael Knowles came to the University of Utah last night, and the focus was certainly on his views regarding transgender people. He arrived to a College of Social Work building draped in dozens of queer and trans pride flags, and a strong protest brought by several University of Utah clubs. His speeches, quotes, focused on what he calls transgenderism, and the signs outside called on him to leave. Knowles came at the request of the Young Americans for Freedom, a group that previously invited fellow Daily Wire speaker Ben Shapiro to the University of Utah. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. The two men accused of kidnapping and torturing a man inside their uh, Sandy apartment are now facing felony charges. Prosecutors say that Justin McCrory and Malachi Bobo tortured the man for several hours before leaving under the impression uh, that he had died. The man was able to escape and get some help. Police are saying this was not random, uh, but have not given a motive. The FBI has arrested an 18-year-old in Idaho for allegedly planning to carry out terror attacks on local churches. KS on his radio's Adam Small is in Idaho and joins us live with the details, Adam. Amanda, the Department of Justice says 18-year-old Alexander Scott Mercurio had pledged his allegiance to ISIS and that he intended to carry out attacks on local churches on ISIS's behalf. Now, he's being charged with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization for the time being. This uh, story actually just coming into the newsroom, and we're gathering more information on it right now. We'll have more of an update in the next hour. Reporting live in Idaho, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Some Utah men are facing accusations of fraud in last fall's second congressional district election. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce is live with more. Becky? Tim, there's a total of 13 people charged and all accused of using people who don't live in Utah to gather signatures in the second district race. State law says signature gatherers have to be Utah residents. Those charges include fraud and forgery as well as tampering with evidence. At one point, the court documents allege that two of these men created a fake lease agreement in order to make it appear that the men from Nevada they'd hired were actually Utah residents. There's about $60,000 in money that was paid in this case. Uh, we're told it did not actually influence the outcome of the election. Live, Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national story is now a change in stance from the former president on abortion. After months of hinting that he would support a federal abortion ban, Former President Donald Trump said yesterday it is an issue for the states to decide. But ABC's Laley Ibsa reports he did not say what he would do if a national abortion ban came across his desk if he were reelected. At campaign rallies, he often touts the fact that he appointed Supreme Court justices that voted to overturn Roe v. Wade and that he was for certain abortion exceptions, rape, incest, and life of the mother. He's remained vague on that. And Monday's statement wasn't a real huge shock as Trump has claimed before that it's probably better for states to be able to decide this issue. But also at the same time, both publicly and privately, Trump has floated a national abortion ban at 15 and 16 weeks. Conservative activists say they still support both the former president and federal limits on abortion. President Biden proposing another student loan plan, one that could affect more than 25 million Americans. ABC's Selena Wang uh, on the podcast, Start Here. This is something that they believe is really going to resonate with young people who are coming out of college, who have all of that student loan debt. And especially at a time when a lot of his supporters, these young progressive voters, are very frustrated with his administration over his handling of the war in the Middle East. So they're really hoping that student loans is something that's going to resonate with them, something that is going to stick with them when they go to the ballot boxes in November. The administration says they're confident the new proposal will survive legal challenges. 
First look traffic now, and here's Andy Farnsworth. And right now it's been a nice start. No crashes to report yet. Volumes on the freeways have been light enough that uh, you don't have any slow spots just yet. So minimum travel times, whether you're on I-15 or even I-80 up towards uh, Parley's Canyon and uh, towards Park City. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. The Yukon Huskies are once again the top dog of men's basketball, uh, men's college basketball. The Huskies finished their dominant March Madness run with a 75-60 to win over Purdue last night. UConn, the first team to repeat as national champion since Florida did it all the way back in 2007. The NCAA Women's Championship final brought in 18.7 million viewers this week. The Iowa-South Carolina game set a record as the most watched women's college basketball game since 1992. The only sporting events in the United States to draw a bigger TV audience since 2019 have been football, the World Cup, and the Olympics. So they did it again. The March Madness Tournament helps support hundreds of Utah's local businesses. Here's KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr. Several RVers made the trek to Utah last month to watch the tournament, staying at and supporting local Utah businesses instead of campsites through the company Harvest Host. Harvest Host works with local businesses to allow RVs to park on their lots to avoid camping fees and stay closer to city events like the March Madness Tournament. COO of the company, Wes Clark, says their whole platform is to help benefit local businesses. Our general philosophy is like these small business operators are, are great at running their businesses and so we we simply help drive traffic their way and that traffic is in the form of RVers. He says in return for no camping fees, RVers purchase goods from the local businesses where they are staying, benefiting the local economy. Alessandra Gurr, KS on News Radio. Two Weber State students are excited to be graduating together after one of them suffered a cardiac arrest during a study break. They are both in the respiratory therapy program. Ali Green had to lean on her schooling to save her friend. I think without the underlying training that I had, I would have completely frozen. I wouldn't have known what to do. Green had to perform CPR and first aid on Audrey Young until first responders arrived. Yeah, good for her. Wow. Uh, quiet morning so far on the roads, although <laughs> it looks a little busier right now than it did even 10 minutes ago. We'll check the drive next. A legacy of news and information going back generations. I'll have the radio on. I learned that from my mom. She's listened to KSL her whole life, and I grew up listening to KSL radio, too. I really enjoy listening in the morning. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. In the history of the world, nobody has ever said, Yay, we need a new roof! But when things aren't quite right up there, don't wait. Call IWC Roofing, the highest rated roofing contractor in Utah. IWC has been in business since 1997, and they offer the best value pricing in Utah, along with the best warranty in the business. They're one of the few Owens Corning Platinum Certified Roofers in the entire state. They have their own installers, no subcontractors crawling around on your roof, and at IWC Roofing, they'll send you pictures from up on the roof to show that you're getting exactly what you paid for in most cases, they'll re-roof your home in one day. They'll clean up and pressure wash your driveway. IWC roofs more homes than any other company in Utah so they can offer you a better price. And right now, an extra $1,500 off your new roof. Call IWC Roofing for a no-pressure quote, 801-232-5690. Call 801-232-5690 or go to IWCRoofingUtah.com. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie, and we're so much much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews, but now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie, and we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I, or download the app today. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at USPS.com advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. Well, there's another story this morning uh, reminding us all that if you see something, say something. This uh, story of the FBI arresting an 18-year-old in Idaho who was planning to carry out terror attacks on local churches. Our Adam Small happens to be in Idaho, and he's following up on that story for us this morning. 
539 now. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Travel time's at a minimum through the Salt Lake Valley, whether you're heading north on I-15 or east on I-80 out of Tooele. SR-36 had some heavy traffic Stansbury Park. That appears to be cleared. Only busy-ish spots I'm seeing are areas where road work's going on, like uh, Bangator Highway down to 2700 West and uh, a couple of spots uh, on Redwood going up uh, into South Salt Lake. Heather? No delays right now getting into Hill Air Force Base up in Weber and Davis County, but that is where we have a little bit more of our traffic centered right now. All three gates just seeing an average number of cars trying to get in to uh, the Roy Gate, West Gate, and South Gates. But if you're on a freeway, no delays, not a lot of traffic right now, I-15 Legacy Parkway or the West Side Belt. Eric? The city streets in Provo are oddly busy this time of the morning. University Avenue from 300 south up to 800 north in both directions. And University Parkway, as you come out of Provo, uh, come out of Orem and go into Provo as you approach University Avenue, that's also uh, busier than it should be this time of the morning. I-15 Utah County, that's looking good. With Two Brothers Mattress, low price guarantee, and their 100-night trial, your locally owned Two Brothers Mattress is your number one choice for Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Learn more at twobrothersmattress.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Take a look at this warming trend. 58 today, mostly sunny skies. Rises to 63 tomorrow with azure blue skies. We keep them clear Thursday, 71, up to 77 on Friday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Starting the morning out there at 36 degrees in Salt Lake City. Coming up in just a moment. So Elon Musk says that robo taxis are going to be here in a year. Haven't they tried Actually, this? Actually, less than a year, I think. Haven't they tried this uh, in New York? And they had a test, I think, in San Francisco, and things did not go well. I'm not sure. But I know who is sure, Mike Dubusky. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to tell us coming up next on KSL. All right, we'll ask Mike that question. Uh, stay with us, and remember to look for us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio, Utah's news traffic and weather station. Everyone's house is different, but they're all the same in one way. We all have those places where the Wi-Fi just won't go. I mean, for you, maybe it's the attic. For me, it's my basement. Well, if you had wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you could worry less about these dead spots. Finally. With wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you get fast speeds throughout your home, a reliable connection in every room, and power for all your devices. Even when everybody's online, that's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi, only on the Xfinity 10G network. Get wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity for a reliable connection throughout your home now through June 21st. New customers can get started with gig speed internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and free Wi-Fi equipment included when you add unlimited mobile. Here's what you do. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY. That's 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Are you ready to start your journey as a small business owner? Ready to start something bold? Something groundbreaking? Utah is the startup capital of the world, and we're setting a new global standard for innovation and entrepreneurship. So if you're thinking about starting a new business or looking to grow an existing business, this is where you'll find the resources to make it happen. Visit startup.utah.gov today and start something here. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile and the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time, there's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Shop our best savings for spring during Spring Fest at Lowe's. Start your gardening projects with savings on premium two cubic foot mulch. Buy five bags for just $10. And right now, get three free bags of miracle Grow three-quarter cubic foot garden soil when you buy three. Visit us in-store and online for our best savings for spring. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Offers valid through 410. Selection varies by location. Excludes Alaska and Hawaii while supplies last. People think saving money is hard, but really, it's easy. It's as simple as changing a few spending habits. For free tips on how to save the easy way, check out FeedThePig.org. That's FeedThePig.org. This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. KSL News Time, 545. 
The three things you need to know this hour. First, new study shows Utah's number three in the country for fatal car crashes in construction zones. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, a West Valley man is facing several charges after police say he fired 15 rounds into a wall in his apartment while his roommate slept on the other side. He said it was because he was frustrated. Third, it's traffic and weather together. So far, the freeways are all at the full speed limit, whether you're starting out in uh, Davis County, Weber County, Salt Lake, or Utah counties, doesn't matter. Going through Parley's Canyon, you might see some heavy traffic coming from Park City, but heading east towards it, nothing to slow you down. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. The warming trend starts today and tops out Friday. I'm Matt Johnson. It's 36 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Let's look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. The FBI has an 18-year-old from Idaho under arrest on charges he was planning to attack local churches. Agents say Alexander Mercurio was inspired by the ISIS strike at a Russian concert hall last month. His arrest coming at the last possible moment, says former FBI Special Agent Brad Garrett. He says typically undercover operations will let a defendant work the way up to a movement if he actually wants to launch an attack. And the FBI apparently thought that informant actually did that. Today is sentencing day for James and Jennifer Crumbly, parents of the Michigan mass shooter who killed four fellow students at Oxford High School in Michigan in 2021. Prosecutors are recommending between 10 and 15 years behind bars. The parents charged with involuntary manslaughter for not doing enough to stop the killings. Special Prosecutor Jack Smith asking this Supreme Court to make its final decision on absolute immunity for Donald Trump. This is ABC News. Let's go in depth here on this Tech Tuesday. Elon Musk says uh, we'll see a robo taxi by the end of summer, but automated cars have had a troubled history in some major cities. ABC News technology reporter Mike Dubusky joins us live. What's the status of, of these robo taxis, Mike? Well, uh, if you ask Elon Musk, imminent is the status. So over the weekend, Elon Musk shared that the Tesla Robo Taxi, an automated self-driving car, is coming on August 8th. They're going to have a big event uh, this summer to reveal their new vehicle. But uh, we don't know a ton about it beyond that. We do know that it's going to be built on Tesla's next generation platform. So it's not like an existing vehicle that they make that's been modified. This is going to be a completely new thing. But whatever it ends up being, guys, it's got a lot riding on it. You talk to analysts about Tesla, and they say that this company's sort of sky-high valuation, $542 billion market capitalization as of this morning, really rests on Tesla making a huge pivot that Elon Musk has been outlining, moving away from being a car company, a manufacturing company, and into being a service, an Uber of electric self-driving taxis that will all talk to one another and interconnect and provide essentially an alternate form of transport around major cities and around major places where people live in this country. There are, as you mentioned, a lot of kind of questions hanging over that. Tesla's current self-driving technology, what they call autopilot, is facing numerous lawsuits of people who have been injured or even killed in accidents involving that technology. And the California Attorney General is investigating them over that as well. I'm sure New York cabbies have heartburn over this yeah. idea, but hasn't this been tried in New York and I think San Francisco where it turned out to be a bit of a nightmare? Yes, so San Francisco recently had Cruz uh, suspended. Cruz is an offshoot of General Motors. It's their sort of experimental wing where they test out self-driving technology. Well, two high-profile crashes resulted in the suspension of service for Cruz recently, uh, just late last year, and Cruz laid off a huge swath of their executive team as well. Now, just recently, within the last day or so, we got word that Cruz is thinking about restarting service in some markets, Phoenix seems to be what they're looking at in particular. But again, it's really hard to develop a self-driving car. What we humans do pretty much every day is a deeply complex task, and training a computer to do that has been proving difficult for these companies. Whether the technology is there or not for Tesla or for Cruise is a huge lingering concern. But again, as we said, Tesla has a lot riding on this. Again, their valuation seems to be tied to this idea that this technology is going to take off. Is it there right now? That's the big question that they're going to have to answer on August 8th when this thing is revealed. So does Elon Musk think that we're all going to give up owning cars and just take these Teslas everywhere? So it's sort of a, an in-between question, right? Like some people will use these robo-taxis basically as public transit. 
but others will own these cars, right? You can still drive back and forth to work, but, you know, where is your car sitting right now? In a parking garage, not doing anything. The idea is that, you know, it takes you to work and then it will go off into the world and maybe collect some fares for you and then come and get you back uh, when you're done at the end of the day. Again, that's a really ambitious goal. That's the dream. But uh, are we there yet? It does not seem like it. So will mm. that change over the summer? We're just going to have to wait and see. Yeah, I've learned not to bet against Elon Musk yeah, and his vision true. of the future. So we'll we'll uh, wait this one out with your help, Mike. Thanks for your reporting on this. ABC News technology reporter Mike Dubusky joining us this morning. On the In-Depth at 15 and 45. 549, time for a look at traffic and weather together. Again, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. How are we looking, Andy? Well, I don't see any slow spots yet through Salt Lake County, whether you're on the freeways. That's I-15, 215. And even so far, the 201 through the intersections in Magno, closest thing to a delay is that red light at 7200 West. But it looks good on Mountain View, Bangor, and Redwood so far. No extra slow spots appear just yet. Heather? Pretty much the same up north. No delays right now through Weber and Davis counties, although traffic is definitely filling in on the I-15 corridor. Now you've got about 10 cars instead of three, so you should be at good speeds less than 30 minutes from Ogden to Salt Lake. Eric? Good movement on the freeway in Utah County from Provo to Point of the Mountain. That's a 20-minute drive going through Provo Canyon out to the Wasatch Back. Uh, US 189 looks great, and uh, US 40 heading north from Heber City. So far, no problems going up to Jordanell Reservoir and then to the Park City area. Monster winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. Don't wait for a disaster. Go to the Masters at MasterRoofingUtah.com to schedule your free windstorm assessment today. Eric Butler on the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7 a forecast. This will likely be our longest stretch of beautiful weather yet this spring. 58 today, mostly sunny skies. We'll go to 63 sunny skies on your Wednesday. We keep those blue skies into Thursday, 71. 77 degrees, folks. Put it in the calendar on Friday, partly cloudy skies. Beautiful start to the weekend, Saturday, 74, partly cloudy. 69 with a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. And how about Monday? Mostly cloudy, but still not that cold, 62. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. It's cold this morning, though, 36 degrees, and the seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Won't be cold by this weekend, and uh, the University of Utah is going to have their spring football game. Oh, that's right. They call it Forever 22 game yeah, now. Yeah, right. And all of the money raised from the tickets, which are 11 bucks a piece, so if you get by two, it's $22. Oh, I see. Uh, we'll go to that... Uh, great program you know to give scholarships to some of the players that come along the way uh, anyway that's going to happen on saturday and they just upped our temperature expectation to 74 degrees nice. on saturday afternoon so that's great news coming up in a minute we'll see what's happening with money this morning looks like narrow trading in store for us we'll see if that sticks throughout the day Beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking by calling Zero Res. Dust, dander, and bacteria are living and breeding in your carpet, upholstery, air ducts, and more with nowhere to go. The spring season allergens such as pollen are coming out of hibernation ready to invade your home. Check out the 3,300 raving customer reviews with a 4.8 Google rating and see what the hype is all about. This month, get three rooms zero resified from Salt Lake's number one carpet cleaner, starting at just 99 bucks, and they'll throw in a free hallway. Plus, take 25% off your air duct cleaning to get that true spring cleaning feel. Call Zero Res right now, 801-288-9376, or go online to ZeroRes.com and say you want the KSL special, Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. The best kept secret is this is the pass. It's a pass for fun for everyone. Now through April 30th, you save $20 off every annual pass level. 362 days of fun. Visit thisisthepass.com. Hot Tub Factory Outlet and Backyards of America is offering an incredible deal. We'll pay the sales tax on every hot tub, swim spa, infrared sauna, and cold plunge sold. Now through April 15th, say goodbye to pesky extra charges and hello to unbeatable savings. We're your local hotspot for hot tubs, swim spas, infrared saunas, and cold plunge. We're not just any store. We're two local guys dedicated to bringing you the best prices and selection around. Step into our showroom and be amazed. We have hot tubs, swim spas, and saunas in every size, color, and model imaginable. From cozy two-seaters to luxurious party-sized tubs and the largest showroom of swim spas. When you buy local, you're not 
not just getting a great deal, you're getting top-notch service too. With our in-house service technician, help is just a phone call away because we believe in making your hot tub and swim spa experience as magical as possible. Hot Tub Factory Outlet, conveniently located next to Calabunga Bay and Backyards of America in Sandy. At KSL News Radio, we have a 30-year legacy of honoring Utah teachers, but we can't do it without your help. Please tell us about an important teacher in your life on the KSL Teacher Tribute Wall, presented by Cypress Credit Union. Each month, one lucky teacher wins a $500 gift card from Cypress Credit Union, a $250 gift card to Harmons, plus season tickets to Hale Center Theater. Say thanks to your teacher today at kslnewsradio.com slash teacher from Cypress Credit Union and KSL News Radio. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Tesla settling a lawsuit over a deadly crash that killed an Apple engineer using autopilot in his Model X. That came just a day after a trial was supposed to start uh, in the uh, case. The uh, settlement details weren't disclosed. Tesla's Elon Musk says it won't be long, maybe a year or two, before AI outsmarts the smartest human on Earth. I would have thought they already outsmarted us. <laughs> yeah. The billionaire co-founded OpenAI, which he later sued because he said it no longer supports the original mission to benefit mankind, not to make a profit. Is it just me or are we talking a lot of Elon Musk today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the only Amazon warehouse in the country with a labor union is headed into a contentious leadership election. It's Amazon's Staten Island facility. In addition to facing pushback from Amazon itself, there are disagreements within the union's leadership, and the union is running out of money and still has no contract. Let's get a look at your money at this moment, and the futures markets are not moving very much. The Dow futures off just three, S&P futures up four, and the Nasdaq futures up 34, which is about two-tenths of a percent. Telling you what we're going to talk about in traffic is tough because there's nothing really to say, and hopefully it stays that way. We'll check traffic and weather together next. Peyton was a very kind and giving person. At 15 years old, he sustained life-threatening injuries from a motorcycle accident that took his life. His family felt like Peyton would want to save others and made the decision to donate his organs. Because of their generosity, his organs saved a two-year-old girl, a teenage boy, and others that were desperate in need of life-saving organs. Go to DonorConnect.life and read about what it takes to become a donor did you know many people think that they're too old or not in good enough health to be a donor? Anyone can be a donor. If you were told that it could save the life for someone close to you or even a stranger, would you please donate? April is National Donate Life Month, the perfect time to check your driver's license to make sure you said yes to giving the gift of life or visit DonorConnect.life to register as a donor. That's DonorConnect.life. Give hope, heal life. Derek Overstreet, founder of the New Millennium Group. We're a financial planning firm. Listen, we're fiduciaries. We have advisors standing by right now to take your call. That's 888-999-6370. 888-999-6370. The reason you're going to want to call is we're going to help you retire three to five years before you thought possible. Now, imagine how that would be if you could actually retire three to five years sooner than your plan was. The way we do this is by putting together a step-by-step plan taking into consideration any rental properties that you have, any pension income that you have, your social security. Listen, we put that all together for you in writing. It will allow us to to build your income based on inflation. You know, inflation has been rapidly rising. You and I both need a plan that whatever we start out our income at, in five or 10 years, we're going to need 40% more income. So if you're one of those people listening and you'd like a plan in writing, give us a call at 888-999-6370. That's 888-999-6370 or go to utahsfinancialplanner.com. Opening statements are this week. It'll be a significantly different defense than Lori presented. In the trial of Chad Daybell. Judge Stephen Boyce laid out some ground rules. Get special coverage live from the courtroom. Breaking updates on testimony and legal analysis all this week. The trial of Chad Daybell. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. 559 Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda traveled through the valley this morning on I-15. Has been a 20-minute commute from Point of the Mountain to downtown. So far, no worse. 
Uh, getting a little bit heavy on Mountain View Corridor, going in that uh, West Valley portion near 5400 South, getting ready to go down the hill. And SR201 starting to fill in between 84 and 7200 West right now. Heather? Starting to see a bit more traffic on the city streets in Davis County. Most of this is centered around Clearfield, especially on SR193 as you go through the industrial park area and head over toward I-15. Once you hop on I-15, no delays, and everybody's at speed heading south into downtown Salt Lake. Eric? Northbounders on the 215 East Belt, not running into any problems as you work your way up from Cottonwood Heights, uh, past Mill Creek Holiday, all the way up to Foothill Drive, and I-80 into the mountains for Eastbounders. That looks good. Westbound, or oh, past Sugar House over to I-15. That's also moving along just fine. Don't let tax problems ruin your life. Let Utah Tax Attorney Jordan Wilcox handle the IRS so you don't have to. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Still on that warming path. 58 today, 63 tomorrow, and right now clear skies will greet you. 36 degrees. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news traffic and weather station good morning ksl news time is six o'clock this is utah's morning news i'm tim hughes and i'm amanda dixon ksl's top story this hour it is a developing story the man accused of intentionally causing several hit and runs in the salt lake valley now being investigated in three other potential cases ksl news radio's adam small is live with details adam Amanda, the Summit County Sheriff's Office confirms that they are investigating whether uh, on fam could have been behind the wheel of a hit and run in Park City one week before he was arrested in March. And that's not all. In a statement, Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill tells KSL TV they are screening potential charges for fam in two hit and runs originally identified by KSL, one on 13th East and 9th South. The other we played you audio of and was caught on video of doorbell a video camera on T Street in the avenues. Fam has already been charged with multiple counts of attempted murder and four hit and runs dating back to August. To date, he's been at minimum investigated for seven total hit and runs. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Utah turns out is number three in the country for fatal construction zone car crashes. That's according to a new study. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, these fatal car crashes and construction zones are going up all around the country. Between 2012 and 2021, the number jumped by over half. The Lending Tree study looks at a decade of crash data from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, and it shows that nearly 80 people died in Utah in these work zones during that decade, putting the state behind only Texas and Nebraska on this list. Passengers and drivers were most likely to die in these wrecks. And it's not for lack of legal rules against this. All three states have laws that aim to slow drivers down on the freeways. Uh, reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Four people are recovering in the hospital after a multi vehicle crash involving a semi truck on US 6. The driver of the semi is in critical condition. The highway was blocked for several hours. This comes just one day after a six year old girl was killed on the highway. KSL's top national stories now. The is Israel Defense Forces say that the largest number of humanitarian aid trucks since October. More than 400 have entered the Gaza Strip. But there's increasing fear that a pause in the fighting could lay the groundwork for future military action. Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. That's ABC's Brett Clement reporting from Israel. Family members with loved ones being held captive by Hamas got a private audience at the Vatican with Pope Francis. And family member Ashley Waxman Bakshi says the Pope did not hold back. Evil. He called them bad guys and evil. And um, he was very clear that the hostages need to come home. I think, you know, we, we can all agree. She also described the Pope as warm and welcoming. 
Chinese-Russian relations are stronger than ever as the foreign minister of both nations meet in Beijing. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi hailing the bilateral relationship, saying their close ties are hard-won and deserve to be carefully maintained. His Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov's trip comes amid Moscow's grinding war in Ukraine and an ongoing effort to align their foreign policies against the U.S. and its allies. Wang says his country would support the convening of an international meeting recognized by both Russia and Ukraine, in which all parties could participate equally. Tom Rivers, ABC News, at the Foreign Desk. Double amputee Sam Matangi traveled to Ukraine to help wounded soldiers adapt to new prosthetics. He tells KSL-TV he wanted to help new amputees find simple success stories. We were trying to bring them a sense of independence. It kind of put me back in my spot where I was. They're going to succeed and be more happier. Matangi says regaining independence helps us know why we're here on the earth. First look traffic as we head back over to the traffic center. Here's Andy. Well, we've got traffic rolling on I-15 from Draper to downtown. Coming south from Ogden, it's less than 30 minutes travel time. And so far, so good. Weather not playing a factor so far in the drive anywhere. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Opening arguments for the trial of Chad Daybell begin this week now that the jury has been selected. KSL TV's Debbie Worthen reports. Chad Daybell faces charges of murdering J.J. Vallow, Tylee Ryan, and his late wife, Tammy Daybell. His trial is expected to last longer than his wife, Lori's, because he faces the death penalty if found guilty. Now, a jury found Lori guilty back in May. She was sentenced to consecutive life sentences in July. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Boise preparing to cover the trial alongside KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. Come back to Utah's Morning News tomorrow for the latest from Boise. You can also follow our complete trial coverage at kslnewsradio.com. Airbnbs are becoming increasingly popular around the globe, especially here in Utah. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr has more. Over $1.2 billion were contributed to Utah's GDP in 2023 from the Airbnbs in the state, according to data from the company. Airbnbs also helped support over 15,000 jobs in the state and generated $360 million in total tax revenue. Overall, Airbnb had a 19.2% increase in revenue in 2023. Utah is one of a handful of states utilizing the potential of virtual power plants. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera spoke with Rocky Mountain Power to explain. Virtual power plants are batteries that are installed where there are homes or businesses collecting solar energy. Residents, for example, can sign up for the Watt Smart Battery Program through Rocky Mountain Power and get incentives for helping charge those batteries that can be used to balance the grid during peak load times or even draw power during outages. About uh, oh, a little over 70,000 solar customers here in Utah, and we've got a, just a little over 4,000 batteries. That was John Whitesides with Rocky Mountain Power. Some states have even passed bills to further incentivize others to contribute. You can learn more about the WattSmart program on their website. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. I-15 continues to look good all the way from Provo to Ogden this morning. Traffic and weather together next. Spend time with KSL News Radio and get a deeper understanding of the world around us. I do listen to KSL so much because you've got voices like Boyd Matheson. Well, I listen to him every day. You can trust him. Inside Sources, weekdays 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and I'm proud to tell you we don't lay off employees when things get tough. During the pandemic, we didn't let one of our installers go. Instead, we had them clean and remodel our offices so they could still get paid. Remember the 2008 housing crisis? It was a financial nightmare for even the biggest contractors. Still, we didn't lay off a single worker. Nope, we sacrificed profits to keep paying everyone. Look, when the economy's down, most contractors are quick to lay off their workers. It's the easiest way to save money when times get tight. But at RGS Exteriors, we're loyal to our people. You know why? Because it's the right thing to do. People first, people always. That's the RGS way. For gutter, siding, windows, and more, call RGS Exteriors at 801-280-3110 or visit rgsexteriors.com. That's rgsexteriors.com, 801-280-3110. At Intermountain Primary Children's Hospital, we made a bold promise to build the nation's model health system for children. Join us in realizing our vision for the future of pediatric care. So together, we can expand primary children's impact and ensure every child has access to the right care at the right place at the right time. For a century, Primary Children's has kept the child first and always. 
Help us continue to do so for the next 100 years. To get involved, visit primarypromise.org. At 34, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. I finished up my treatments. I truly, truly feel like every day is a gift. I really want to give back, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to help with this study. Heretogene is an extraordinarily innovative research study wherein we are looking at the genes of hundreds of thousands of participants. The more information that we have, the more we can help others. You can help at heretogene.org. Helping people live the healthiest life possible in a mountain health care, healing for life. Why do we have such a hard time with uh, construction zones in Utah? I don't know. When I saw that this morning, that we're one of the worst places for fatal car accidents in construction zones, I thought, man. Number three in the country. And by the way, it's not the workers that are dying. It's the drivers and their passengers oh, for really? the most part. Oh, I didn't see that part so, of it. So uh, another good reason to be careful as you make your way in this morning. There's plenty of construction going on out there. Peter Johnston is following up on that new study this morning. It's 6.09. Speaking of being on the roads, let's check that drive early this morning. Uh, brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon, Andy. Tim, it's a great drive on our freeways in Salt Lake. It uh, includes I-15. 201 was starting to back up for a touch uh, in uh, Magna for a while, but that's cleared for now. Tooele County, pretty quiet along SR-36 between Tooele City and Lake Point right now. Heather? Not too bad up north in Weber and Davis counties. Traffic is definitely filling in, though. We're seeing a bit of crowding on SR-193 at a lot of the larger intersections, especially around Hillfield Road at the south gate of Hill Air Force Base, also right around Main Street and SR-193. Southbound I-15 has most of your traffic, though, but it is still at speed between Ogden and Salt Lake. Eric? Still, uh, some folks out on University Avenue this morning in Provo uh, from the freeway I-15 uh, past 300 south up to about 800 north in spots at some of those intersections. Appears that there's more volume than usual or the sensors have gone crazy, one or the other. Uh, northbound from Payson, two point of the mile, I-15 looks good in Utah County. That's a 28-minute drive. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. A beautiful spring day is on tap with a high of 58 degrees and mostly sunny skies. Overnight, we'll dip off to 41. Not that bad for this time of year. 63 sunny skies for your Wednesday. Thursday, we're to 71 with sunny skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 36 degrees to start the morning. We're going to learn more from a KSL TV's Daniela Rivera about how Utah schools are trying to get carbon monoxide detectors installed. That feels like a no-brainer. I can't believe they don't have them. Except for it's presenting a challenge. We'll learn more from her in a moment here on KSL News Radio. Stay with us for that conversation coming up. Just a reminder to uh, watch for streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. You know, Deb, you and I have had this conversation so many times. We think, oh, I wish I had a little more light here or maybe a ceiling fan there. That's why we love Master Electrical. So anytime we have an electrical problem, we know we can call them and they will give us their upfront pricing guarantee. Because we're not going to do it yourself. We're going to leave it to the professionals. And this upfront pricing guarantee is fantastic. I'm sure you've been bitten by bids in the past where they say, oh, that's going to take half a day. And then two weeks later... The bid and the invoice have nothing to do with each other. Not only will you get their upfront pricing guarantee, but you will never see an upcharge. Their pricing system simply won't allow it. Master Electrical proudly serves from Logan to Santa Quin. They do everything that has to do with electrical, and they're always open, including for emergency services. The phone number to call is 801-543-2222. 801-543-2222 or check them out online at masterelectrical.com. Say goodbye to morning traffic. Good morning. Baby, it's a brand new day. And hello to Rome, Barcelona, and Santorini. When you sail Europe with Norwegian Cruise Line, you wake up to a new city nearly every day. And we make it easy to get there with free airfare for second guest. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Norwegian Cruise Line, Ships Registry, the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. The rest of my 
my life gonna start today. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. Already feels like home. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat, watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us. Good morning, KSL News Time, 615. The three things you need to know this hour. First, the FBI has arrested an 18-year-old Idaho man after investigators say he pledged allegiance to ISIS and was going to carry out attacks on local churches. In Idaho, I'm KSL News Radio's Adam Smoll. Second, the man accused of intentionally running over multiple women in the Salt Lake Valley is now being investigated for three more potential cases. Third, let's check the drive with traffic and weather together. Traffic on I-15 is fine. 201, a little bit heavy out in Magna, but really a nice drive for everybody early this morning. Weather not a factor so far. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly sunny and a solid 7 degrees warmer than yesterday. I'm Matt Johnson. 36 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for a look at our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. Federal authorities say they've stopped what could have been a violent attack on churches in Idaho. 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio, said to be inspired by ISIS, is under arrest. The charges against Mercurio lay on a chilling plan where he would, quote, incapacitate his father, restrain him using handcuffs, and steal his firearms to use for maximum casualties in his attack. Sources tell ABC News his father had dozens of weapons, including an AR-15-style assault rifle. That's ABC Chief Law and Justice correspondent Pierre Thomas. The parents of Michigan school shooter Ethan Crumbly will be sentenced today for involuntary manslaughter. Federal prosecutors are weighing in on Donald Trump's claims before the Supreme Court that he deserves absolute immunity for his actions as president. Two weeks before the Supreme Court hears oral arguments, the special counsel's brief urges the justices to reject what it calls Trump's novel and sweeping claims of immunity. Trump and his lawyers have argued that without a protection from prosecution for their official acts in office, presidents might feel unduly restrained. But Jack Smith's team says Trump took democracy-damaging steps to remain in power, actions that were private, not presidential. ABC national correspondent Stephen Portnoy. Social media platforms are jammed with photos taken during yesterday's eclipse. Now the question is, will today be a letdown? For months, Betsy Moorhead and her sisters were ordering eclipse-themed merchandise to sell to the thousands who came to Hillsboro, Texas for its 4 minutes and 23 seconds of totality. I think I'll be excited to get a little bit more sleep. At the same time, she admits... I'm going to be sad. I mean, it's just been kind of one of those exciting things that we, you lead up to, and it's been really fun to witness this happen in our in our little town here. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Dallas. UConn wins the NCAA title once again in men's basketball. We found out the women's title game on Sunday was the most watched women's game in college basketball history. You're listening to ABC News. Let's go in depth now. Utah schools are working to get carbon monoxide detectors installed, but it's not as easy as just grabbing a detector off the shelf. KSL TV's Daniela Rivera has more after meeting with State Fire Marshal Ted Black. Here's what we know about the 11 schools that still don't have detectors. Six are in the Granite School District, three in Tintic, one in Tooele, and one in Wayne. All districts told KSL they're slated to get them within the next year and a half. Other large districts like Alpine and Jordan are fully in compliance. Weber says a quarter of their schools do not have integrated systems, but all have monitors in critical areas. 
Rural San Juan County, where a 2013 leak at an elementary school prompted the state requirement, is now fully equipped. So were the two schools where students got sick in the last year, showing even buildings that have detectors can have problems. But getting every school to comply is just the beginning. Black says these detectors have a shelf life of six to ten years. CO detection there, okay. His team of eight inspectors try to check on them in each school once a year, like they did here at Arcadia Elementary in Taylorsville. But Black says it's more important to prevent leaks from heating systems in the first place. Maintain your systems. You can see Daniela's full KSL Investigates report online at ksltv.com. You know, I was just doing a mental check here of how many uh, CO detectors we have in our house. Mm hmm and I think it's like eight or nine. Really? Wow. Um, so how many would you have to have in a single school? A boatload. But it, it seems strange to me that it takes that. I guess they're just expensive. It's just an, it's got to be a money issue. Yeah. And and then the fact that they do have to be checked and then replaced every eight to ten years. Yeah. Uh, they have to roll over. But I'm surprised in today's day and age that there are that many schools that don't have them. Do you have to get an electrician to wire those in or is that something you can just put up? That's a well. I think you can just put them up. I mean, they're battery operated, right? They have battery backups, and, but aren't they wired into the system? Some in our house, you just plug into the wall, oh, uh, and they're self-contained. So you could probably do that, but you know, you'd have to ask That's the experts. A, yeah, yeah. Uh, we have a mix of them in our house. I know. Anyway, uh, thanks to KSL TV's Daniela Rivera for that important story this morning. Six nineteen traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to twenty cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda looks good as you travel through the valley on I-15. And so far, our northbound major routes, including Mountain View and Bangor, have yet to see any uh, real slow spots show up yet. In Tooele County, if there's any extra travel time, it's going to be making it through the intersections in Stansbury Park, not so much in Tooele City or Lake Point so far. Heather? Our busiest areas right now in Davis County are right around Hill Air Force Base. If you're at the west gate in Clearfield, most of the traffic is going into the gate. If you're at the south gate in Layton, looks like most of the people are exiting the base. So I've uh, just got a little bit of different traffic patterns this morning. You also have traffic filling in on SR-193 on the west side of Clearfield, west of I-15. But I-15 itself still at speed, both directions between Ogden and Salt Lake. Eric. The only real southbound travel issue we're seeing this morning in Utah County is the southbound front runner from American Fork to Provo. You got a 30 minute delay due to mechanical issues. So if that's something you do on a normal basis, I-15 Utah County for cars, that's looking good. Northbound from Provo to Point of the Mountain, that's a 20 minute drive. Beat the spring cleaning rush and call Zero Res. Get three rooms plus a hallway, Zero Resified for $99. Visit ZeroRes.com and book your appointment today. Zero Res, Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast, 58 today, mostly sunny skies. High pressure continues to nudge in from the California coast on Wednesday. 63 sunny skies, 10 above the normal by Thursday, 71 up to 77 degrees, partly cloudy skies on Friday. We dial it back just a touch on Saturday, 74, mix of sun and clouds, partly cloudy on Sunday, 69 we're down to 62, mostly cloudy. No uh, complaints there by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 36 in Salt Lake City. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Do you have any spring fever going on over there, Tim? You know, as a skier, I kind of oh. hold to the winter. <laughs> I see. Uh, that's true. But spring skiing is still great, and uh, I see motorcycles on the road, so that also gives oh, me yeah. a little bit of an itch. My son got up this weekend to do some snowboarding, too, and had a great, great time. It's wonderful to be up there in the mountains. I love when the seasons are extended. It's going to get a little mushy down at the base, I'm sure, yeah. with 70-degree uh, temperatures coming in the valley. Right. What did he say? 78 degrees? 77 degrees 77. on Friday. Wow. Yeah. Hey, Tim and I have Lower Bowl Jazz tickets to give away. What are you doing tonight? You busy tonight? Lower Bowl tickets to give away. The Nuggets are in town, and we'll give you another keyword at 845 this morning, so be listening. Kind of sad. I looked over at the uh, blooming trees outside the Delta Center, which Larry did originally because it was to signal playoffs. Yeah. No playoffs no for playoffs. the Jazz this, Not year. this year. Two chances to watch them this week. We hope you win the tickets today. KSL News Time 623. If you need
bold banners to boost your business, but you're on a budget. Think Staples. Posters, flyers, signs, and menus for less? Think Staples. Staples can print anything you need to move your business forward. Now at Staples, save $50 on your print purchase of $150 or more. Same day service available on hundreds of items if you order by noon. And all backed by Staples Print Perfect Guarantee. So it's done right or it's printed again free. Staples, your local print and marketing expert. And 6-1, visit staples.com slash print for details. Hey everyone, it's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. The best kept secret is this is the pass. It's a pass for fun for everyone. Now through April 30th, save $20 off every annual pass level. 362 days of fun. Visit thisisthepass.com. You know that feeling? Your air conditioner starts making a weird noise, but you don't know if that's a typical weird noise or potentially expensive weird noise. And you just want somebody smart to come and look at it and maybe get things back to when you had perfectly good air conditioning without a stupid weird noise. Whipple that away. Making weird sounding air conditioners quiet again is my job. Make your problem my problem. Whipple Service Champions. Look for our special offers at whippledataway.com. Hi, Doug Wright here with one more little experiment you can do at home in a pan of water. All you have to do is stir in limestone, calcium, magnesium particles, and then heat that whole mess up on the stove. And you know what? On second thought, not such a good idea because limestone, calcium, and magnesium particles heated in water will clump and stick to your pan like concrete, which incidentally is exactly what's going on inside your water heater. Think about it. Limestone, calcium, magnesium, that's what makes hard water hard. And trust me on this, if you live in northern Utah, your home has hard water. So call Connecticut of Utah. I'll give you the number in a moment. They'll test your water's hardness for free, and they'll show you the patented design features that make Connecticut water softeners work better than any other. Connecticut of Utah, an authorized Connecticut dealer. To learn more, call Connecticut. It's 801-576-8600 or log on to softwaterutah.com. And call now while it's on your mind. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Utah's gas prices are now a full 28 cents above the national average. The AAA fuel gauge report says we're up 64 cents in the last month, Tim. Yeah. Currently averaging 388 a gallon. If I remember back when the... <laughs> That wasn't such a bad thing. Mm -hmm. So recently, our monthly increase was about twice as fast as the nation's. Yeah, and that's part, I'm guessing, of what led to, uh, to Jamie Dimon's comments yesterday. I saw this. The same leading banker who predicted we could hit 8% inflation is also talking up the future of artificial intelligence on your money. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon's annual letter to shareholders predicts AI will transform much of the business and society he says uh, we've barely scratched the surface of that potential. Shares of Trump Media and Technology Group are falling again this morning after a rough day on Monday. The company owns the former president's Truth Social platform. It closed down 8.4 percent yesterday, and in pre-market trading this morning, shares are down another 1 percent. The uh, markets today, not much movement. It's kind of starting out the same way we did 24 hours ago. The futures of the Dow up. 49. The S&P is up about 13, which is three-tenths of a percent. The Nasdaq is up 69 this hour. We're looking at a lot of flashing lights, a lot of police vehicles on the westbound side of the 215 South Belt over at the 280 East exit. We'll check in and find out what's going on just ahead on KSL. Tell me about your elevated checking. Oh, I switched my checking account over to elevated checking at Utah Community Credit Union. And I don't even think of it as a checking account, really, because I, I don't write checks. But I do everything else, Tim, that I get with elevated checking. Like, yeah. I get cell phone protection. I get roadside assistance. The thing that I just can't get over is I actually get 24-7 telehealth appointments with zero copay with my UCCU checking account. Yeah, now think about that. You're probably already paying for roadside assistance yeah. outside of your 
you know, expenses everywhere else, probably paying for uh, telehealth sure. if you utilize it. At least a copay. No doubt paying for cell phone uh, protection through your uh, cell phone company. All of that just goes away. You're going to save that much money a month. Plus, of course, uh, the security benefits of elevated checking are really something. The identity monitoring, the uh, monitoring that is, the dark web monitoring that they have, even identity theft resolution, up to $10,000 in reimbursement, uh, theft reimbursement. Uh, with this uh, elevated checking, those those security monitoring things at UCCU are huge. They just ca- they just helped me catch a scam that was trying to take one hundred ninety five dollars out of my account. Really, I just I can't tell you they're wonderful. And you might be sitting there saying, okay, but what's the catch? There really isn't one. If you use your debit or credit card fifteen times or more a month, which you said you don't write checks, most people it's don't all debit these cards. days. Or I have monthly deposit. You know, my automatic deposit goes in there for my paycheck. That'll that'll make it free too. Yeah, free. Find out more. Go online to uccu.com, stop into any branch, or uh, just uh, pick it up and, and uh, ask one of the great people at any of their branches. Utah Community Credit Union, you're going to love where you bank. April in Utah means warmer temps, spring runoff, and yes, road work. For every spring surprise, rely on KSL News Radio. Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon cover what happened overnight from 5 to 9. Dave and Debbie and Boyd Matheson have in-depth conversation during the day. And Jeff Kaplan takes you home with his trademark minute of news. All season, every day. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. 629 means traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Our interest is peaked, Andy, because that's a weird cluster of emergency vehicles on the belt. Yeah, it's 215 South End, right by the 280 East on-ramp. There's some on the on-ramp emergency vehicles and some on the right shoulder of westbound 215. This is as you head over towards I-15 in Murray. No backups on the uh, main flow, though. That's the main thing is that there hasn't been much of an effect yet. I-15's also been looking great between Draper and downtown. That's still only a 20-minute drive through Salt Lake County. Heather? We have less than 30-minute commute southbound I-15 from Ogden to downtown Salt Lake. Traffic is filling in, though, on the I-15 corridor. You'll see that extra traffic now through Clearfield, Layton, Kaysville area. No problems on US-89 or Legacy Parkway. And city streets are also getting a bit busy, especially in Ogden and Clearfield. Eric. I-80, good shape uh, heading out to the mountains this morning if you're uh, going to the Wasatch back or vice versa. No problems on US-40 uh, in between Heber City and Park City this morning. Down Utah County, I-15 is cruising along at a normal pace. Did you know simple maintenance rejuvenates your asphalt roof for 30 to 50% longer? Don't wait for a disaster. Go to the Masters at MasterRoofingUtah.com to schedule your free assessment today. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. It's going to be a beautiful day. A high of 58 degrees right now, 36 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning, KSL News Time, 6.30. KSL's top story this hour. The FBI has arrested an 18-year-old Idaho man who investigators say planned to carry out attacks in the name of ISIS. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Idaho and joins us live with the latest. Adam? Amanda, the Department of Justice says 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio had pledged his allegiance to ISIS and that he planned to attack people at churches in Quarter Lane this past Sunday, though he was arrested one day before that. ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett says it's actually common for investigators to intervene at the last minute. Typically in undercover operations, you let a defendant work all the way up to the moment before he actually wants to launch an attack. And the FBI, apparently through an informant, actually did that. Mercurio is now being charged with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. He faces up to 20 years in federal prison if he's in, if he's convicted. In Idaho, live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. A quartet of Utah men are accused in a scheme to illegally gather signatures in last year's second congressional district election by hiring people from out of state to help. KSL News Radio's Becky Bruce explains live. Becky? Tim, two of the men are accused of hiring people from out of state to help gather those signatures in the second district race to replace the retiring Congressman Chris Stewart. For context, Utah law says signature gatherers have to live in Utah. According to the documents filed in third district court, they allegedly hired some Utah residents to say they gathered the signatures, not the out of staters. All told, 13 people face a variety of both felony and misdemeanor charges. Those charges do not say 
which candidate or party they were supporting. Live, Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. A West Valley man is facing several charges after police say he fired 15 rounds into a wall in his apartment while his roommate slept on the other side. Police documents say the 39-year-old was upset about his financial situation and missed his child, so he decided to take his frustration out on the wall. No injuries were reported. A far-right political commenta- uh, commentator delivered a speech at the University of Utah, sparking protests from students and some faculty. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with details. Peter. Tim, the University of Utah's College of Social Work was covered in rainbow balloon arches and pride flags when Daily Wire commentator Michael Knowles arrived on campus yesterday. Knowles is known nationally for strong views against what he views as gender identity discussions in schools, using terms in one speech that many in the LGBTQ community find offensive. At the U, he argued there needs to be education about traditional roles of gender. Sure, we don't want to tell a little kid about the birds and the bees, but we necessarily will tell them something about family. Protesters tell the Daily Utah Chronicle the group that invited Knowles, Young Americans for Freedom, chose the College of Social Work as a location because they wanted to generate a response. One leader from the group says Knowles would reach conservative students that they claim don't feel included in campus discussions. Reporting live, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories this hour. Former President Donald Trump appears to be softening his stance on abortion after months of hinting on the campaign trail that he supports a national ban. ABC's Laley Ibsa reports the former president did not answer key questions. While he said that abortion bans should be left up to the states, he didn't say if there was a certain number of weeks he believes that these bans should take into effect. He didn't say what he would do if a national abortion ban came across his desk if he was reelected as president. Conservative activists today say they still support federal limits on abortion while they maintain their support for Mr. Trump. A new student loan plan could stash debt for, or slash debt rather, for millions of Americans, but does it really have a chance of becoming reality? ABC News senior White House correspondent Selena Wang tells podcast Start Here that the Biden administration is confident. The administration obviously hopes that this would come through before the November elections. In fact, they would hope it would come very shortly before, so the voters will have fresh in their mind the fact that President Biden relieved their student loan debt. And in fact, I was just talking to several voters who say that this is one of the top issues when it comes to who they support for president. The latest proposal from the president would cancel up to $20,000 for borrowers. It's estimated that that could be uh, more than 25 million Americans. First look traffic now takes us back to you, Andy. Amanda, a lot of emergency vehicles. You'll see them on 215 as you head west from Union Park over towards I-15, but they haven't had any slowdown impact on the main flow so far. Been watching I-15 this whole morning yet to see any delays show up north or south between Ogden, Salt Lake, and Provo. That's on I-15 itself. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. In sports, the UConn Huskies took the men's NCAA championship uh, title once again after a 75-60 victory over Purdue last night. Connecticut entered the tournament as the number one overall seed and the favorite to win. It's the team's sixth national championship in program history. Did you notice from time to time during the tournament the cameras would show Bill Murray Mm -hmm. uh, sitting in the stands? Yeah. It's because his son was the architect of the offensive scheme for the Huskies. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So if you wondered why he was always there uh, courtside, now you know. UConn is the first team to repeat as national champion since Florida did it back in 2007. The NCAA Women's Championship final brought in 18.7 million viewers this week. The Iowa-South Carolina game set a record. That's the most watched college basketball, women's college basketball game. And the one before that, the next second one, was Friday night. Yeah. When they when the Iowa took on a uh, UConn. So that's interesting. The only sporting events in the United States to draw a bigger TV audience since 2019 have been football, the World Cup, and the Olympics. It's been quite a tournament. The March Madness uh, tournament finally over, but it brought lots of travelers to the Beehive State. Here's KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr. Hundreds of RVers traveled to Utah last month to enjoy the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Many of the visitors used the RV membership program Harvest Host, which allows travelers to park their RVs at local businesses in side cities rather than outside at campsites and helps them avoid a campsite fee. In return, RVers purchase goods from the local businesses where they are staying, which is what they did in Utah in March to help boost the local economy. It's interesting. Some of the most popular RV spots were in Santaquin and South Salt Lake. Hmm. Coming up in just a moment, we still see those uh, flashing lights, police cars on I-215.
It's right around Fashion Place Mall, but we'll find out what's going on there. Traffic and weather together coming up next. Bigger stories demand more accountability, more experience, more trust. If it's like an election day or we're expecting some bad weather, KSL presents the story. I'm biased. It's a good local source. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Utah homeowners, it's time to roll up your sleeves and dive back into your backyard projects this spring with Geneva Rock. Whether you're planning to lengthen your patio for barbecues or extend your driveway for that new RV, boat, or new toy, Geneva Rock's Ready Mix Concrete is your go-to solution. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY to get started. Geneva can even introduce you to a licensed contractor for the job. Your project starts here. Visit GenevaRock.com slash DIY today. An emergency can happen any second. Here's a few seconds to think about where you'd go. When you need medical care fast, the closest emergency room is a smart thing to know. Common Spirit Health ERs are your direct path between feeling scared or uncomfortable and feeling better. Find emergency care in your neighborhood at mountain.commonspirit.org. Put the equity in your home to work with a home equity line of credit and get 6.49% APR for the first six months. Learn more at cypresscu.com. Warmer weather is here, and Skinny Utah would like to help you shape up for summer by losing 20 pounds or more in the next 40 days. That's right, at least 20 pounds in as little as 40 days. That's the Skinny Utah 20-pound promise, where they customize every plan because no two bodies are alike. Their proven programs are 100% natural. There are never any prepackaged meals or shakes to buy, and never any dangerous shots, drugs, or hormones. At Skinny Utah, they teach you how to eat real food you buy at the store. Take the first step to a healthier new you and schedule your free weight loss strategy session at SkinnyUtah.com, a $300 value, absolutely free. Skinny Utah has offices in Centerville, Draper, and Orem, and they're extending their couple special where the second person is half price. Schedule your free weight loss strategy session today at SkinnyUtah.com. That's SkinnyUtah.com. At Skinny Utah, you have nothing to lose but the weight. Adam Small is in Idaho this morning, and he's following up on this FBI arrest of an 18-year-old man who supposedly was planning a terrorist-like attack Mm. on churchgoers Mm -hmm. in Idaho in the Coeur d'Alene area and talking about incapacitating his own father to get his uh, (sighs) dad's weapons. We'll uh, continue to follow this story for you with any new information throughout the morning. 639 Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, it's been a quiet drive. In fact, all the emergency vehicles just drove away from 280 East and I-215 on the South Belt uh, heading over towards I-15, so not even that to look at anymore. We are starting to see some slowdowns, though, on the west side of Salt Lake County and Mountain View Corridor at 3500 South. So far, Bank are not seeing any slow spots that you need to worry about or avoid yet. Heather? No problems on major roadways through Weber and Davis counties. I-15, US-89, I-84, they're all traveling at speed, as well as the West Davis Highway. But it's the city streets that are showing most of the congestion at the moment. Mostly it's at places where the larger intersections when lights turn red. But you're also starting to see backups now getting into Hill Air Force Base at all three gates. Eric? I-15 continues to move along in Utah County, uh, northbound from the Spanish Fork to Point of the Mountain. That's a 24-minute drive. And if you're heading out to the mountains right now, uh, US-189 through Provo Canyon, I-80 through Parley's Canyon, that's all in good shape. Discover the power of hands-on learning at Tuella Technical College. With affordable, flexible, and achievable technical education, your future begins here. Apply today at tuellatech.edu. That's tuellatech.edu. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. How about mostly sunny skies today with a high of 58 degrees? Beautiful. 41 overnight with mostly clear skies. Tomorrow's mostly sunny, 63. We're to the 70s by Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. St. George, by the way, will be almost 90 on Friday, believe it or not. It's 36 downtown. Uh, Former President Trump's lawyers tried to delay that criminal trial in New York. This is the one about the hush money payments. And then they they filed a motion to change venue, to move it out of Manhattan. The judge denied both of those Mm. requests. We'll talk more about it coming up in a moment on KSL. Let's get Jeff Kaplan's minute of news here. It's brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. I think we've stumbled upon a solution to high gas prices. Remember Google Glass? It failed. 
Now Apple is selling VR goggles so heavy they make your neck ache, so expensive they make your budget break. They're like 3500 bucks. No one wants to wear obtrusive headgear that makes you look like a cyborg, which is why smart contact lenses are such an interesting idea. The problem is, how do you power them up? You don't want a battery hanging off your eyeball, which is why it's so cool that a U of U doctoral student figured out how to power smart contacts with a substance that's in endless supply, liberal tears. Come on and cry me a river. When you blink, tear juice swishes around the contact lens and touches a little smidge of magnesium. Voila! Your contact lenses have power. At first, these lenses might just check for eye problems, but eventually they could conceivably replace your phone with smart contacts that run on tears. A tremendous breakthrough. Come on and cry me a river. Now this election year, if the U could just harness the power of conservative rage along with the liberal tears, we'd have so much energy you wouldn't need to fill up a 389 a gallon anymore. Problem solved. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. Brought to you by the Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you. The Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. Hi, I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. When the IRS invades your life, it's never good news. My name is Jim. So I went through a difficult time with a divorce. Um, then the economy crashed. I was out of work. Combination of the way that my ex-wife was filing the tax returns caused mine to get rejected. And I found myself in a difficult situation that I didn't know how to get out of. Don't face the IRS alone. With everything in your life at stake, don't trust just anyone. I could not believe that it was even possible. I had hoped for something. Never dreamt in my wildest dreams he would get what he got. You need someone to fight for you. We owed 80300 and something, and I paid $1,000. Visit TaxHelpUT.com and get relief today. Let's solve your tax problems now. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. It was incredible. Do yourself a favor. Call Jordan Wilcox. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Any hour services can help unclog any drain in your house. Whether you have a backup, a clog, or a slow drain you want fixed, call Any Hour Services or visit AnyHourServices.com. Good morning, KSL News Time, 645. <laughs> The three things you need to know this hour. First, a Weber State student dubbed the walking miracle after surviving cardiac arrest is set to graduate alongside the student who saved her. I'm KSL News Radio's Britt Johnson. Second, Utah's Airbnbs generated over $1.2 billion last year, supporting over 15,000 jobs and bringing in nearly $400 million in total tax revenue. Third, it's traffic and weather together. Traffic a little bit slow, building on I-15 near 53rd South. First slowdown of the morning on the north bound side, still at the full speed limit going south uh, through Weber and Davis counties. Uh, and in Tooele, getting pretty heavy out on SR 36 now. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. The warming trend starts today and tops out Friday. I'm Matt Johnson. 36 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Time for a look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. Norfolk Southern Railroad has agreed to pay $600 million in a class action lawsuit settlement related to the fiery train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio, in February of last year. If approved, it would resolve all class action claims within a 20-mile radius from the derailment. 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio under arrest in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, for allegedly planning to attack churches in his area. The FBI says his plot involved a murderous rampage using knives and firearms to kill parishioners. He also planned to set their houses of worship on fire. According to criminal charges unsealed last night, Mercurio had bought a number of items for his attack, including butane canisters for setting fires. And those charges say on Saturday, Mercurio sent an audio file to an FBI confidential informant. 20 seconds long, it says in part, I'm answering the call for the Islamic State for jihad. ABC's Pierre Thomas, a judge rejects Donald Trump's last minute appeal to dismiss or move his hush money trial. This is ABC News. Let's go in depth on that. As a matter of fact, former President Donald Trump won't get to move his criminal hush money trial out of Manhattan after a judge denied that motion. An appeals court also said he cannot delay the start date. We get the latest live with ABC's Peter Harrell. Lambus in New York. Peter, explain to us, if you would, what the judge's decision was based on, or did, did we learn that? 
Yeah, it was a very sparse decision yesterday from an appeals court in New York. It was only one sentence. Uh, but fundamentally, after hearing the argument, she appeared to be unconvinced that it would be impossible to find a fair jury in Manhattan County. Trump's lawyers had argued that the pre -pub pretrial publicity surrounding the case had fundamentally tainted the jury pool here, that it would be impossible to find a jury of 12 New Yorkers and six alternates that could fairly consider Trump's case. Uh, but that argument simply wasn't enough for this single judge who shot down the argument after only thinking about it for about an hour yesterday. Trump's lawyers are expected back in court today to argue about the limited gag order. That's the one that prohibits Trump from talking about uh, the family of the judge overseeing the case and the Manhattan district attorney. Uh, but all signs at this point point to this trial starting on Monday, April 15th. Can you help us understand why the FEC uh, dropped this case three years ago and whether they're still pushing on the uh, New York side for the same charges or no? It's complicated at this case, at, at this point. Um, these actions stem back to 2016 and really fired up around 2018 when Michael Cohen pled guilty. At the end of the day, the jury's not going to hear too much about the history of the case, particularly the FEC side of things. Um, but it appears that uh, this, there's been a pretty windy, ro windy road uh, from the start of that investigation in 2018 to now and, and last year when the Manhattan District Attorney charged this case. Uh, it appears that after all those years of investigation. They're going to pursue a case theory that uh, fundamentally relies on the testimony of Michael Cohen. Um, and they've been able to convince a jury to indict, the grand jury to indict. The question now becomes whether uh, 12 jurors that they select starting on Monday uh, will convict. Wow. So it's one of the trials is actually going to start on Monday. Do we have any sense of how long it'll go? Right now, the rough estimate is somewhere between six and eight weeks. It's only going to sit on four days a week, but this means that Donald Trump will be stuck in a courtroom on Mondays, Wednesdays, uh, Mondays Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays every day. Um, it could go longer depending on who gets called as a witness, um, but it's fully likely that Donald Trump is going to be in that courtroom for two months. Boy, and we're going to hear a lot about the credibility of uh, Michael Cohen, aren't we? Yeah, that's going to be one of the central witnesses at the end of the day. Um, the judge has cleared the way for Mr. Cohen to testify, um, and he certainly um, is going to be a point of ire for Trump and his defense lawyers. They are going to hammer out his credibility um, in Donald Trump's civil fraud case. That was the one in fall related to the, fall, uh, related to the inflation of Trump's assets to get bu better business deals. Uh, the cross-examination of Cohen took multiple days. Um, and while at the end of the day, the judge found that Cohen's testimony in that case was credible, um, it's unclear if those attacks and a scathing cross-examination uh, are going to damage his credibility in the mind of at least one of those 12 jurors. Mm, fascinating. We'll follow up with your help, Peter. Thank you. Peter Haralombos with us from New York on that trial. I didn't realize. I didn't sink in. It starts on Monday. Yeah. Wow. We'll follow it here on KSL. It is uh, time again for a look at The Drive with traffic and weather together. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Did we ever learn what was going on on I-215, Andy? It's cleared out now. Nope. They all drove away, and that's good. So no slowdowns on 215 heading over to I-15. But if you're on I-15 in Midvale going into Murray over 215, you got some heavy traffic where we always see it. Maybe even a little earlier today to be heavy in that stretch. We've got some southbound waiting times now on Mountain View going through uh, South Jordan and some northbound slowdowns in West Valley on Mountain View. Bangor are beginning to see uh, traffic backing at those intersections from ta uh, West Taylorsville into West Valley now. Heather? Still no brake lights on I-15, but traffic is pretty heavy as you head south between Clearfield and Farmington Centerville area. Once you get past that, you are still at speed, but a little bit less traffic all the way into downtown Salt Lake. No problems right now if you need to get to the airport using Legacy Parkway in the West Side Belt. City streets are a bit congested, especially at the larger intersections. Eric. Not seeing any serious delays in Utah County. You're looking at a 30-minute drive northbound from Santa Quinn to Point of the Mountain. Out in the Wasatch Bank, US-40 looks good. Northbound from Heber City up to Park City. And I-80 through Parley's Canyon, no problems there. Transform your outdated kitchen with half-priced granite. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite starting at $25 per square foot installed. Visit halfpricedgranite.com. Affordable luxury. Eric Fudler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL. 7A forecast. This will likely be our longest stretch of beautiful weather yet this spring. 58 today, mostly sunny skies. We'll go to 63 sunny skies on your Wednesday. 
We keep those blue skies into Thursday, 71, 77 degrees, folks. Put it in the calendar on Friday, partly cloudy skies. Beautiful start to the weekend, Saturday, 74, partly cloudy, 69 with a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. And how about Monday? Mostly cloudy, but still not that cold, 62. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. And right now it's 36 degrees, and the seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. We'll check money news coming up here in just a minute. Our news time is 6.52. At Fisher Investments, we may seem like other money managers, but we're different. Are you really that different than the rest of us? We are. As a fiduciary, we always focus on what's best for our clients. What services do you offer besides investing? We have a team of specialists in financial planning, estate planning, and more. Your clients rely on you for all that? Yes, we ensure clients receive unparalleled service at every step of the relationship. Okay, but you still sell commission-based products, right? No, because we believe that's a conflict of interest. We prioritize service over sales goals. So, then how do your fees work? We have a simple and transparent fee that's a percentage of our clients' portfolios. So we do better when our clients do better. Wow, we're more different than I thought. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Learn more at fisherinvestments.com. Investing in securities involves the risk of loss. Looking for a secure retirement plan without market risk? Look no further. Lyle Boss, president of Boss Financial, specializes in no market risk retirement strategies with guarantees of principal, guaranteed growth, and lifelong income. Join Lyle right here each Saturday and Sunday for his Safe Money radio show and call him now at 855-355-SAFE for your complimentary customized Safe Money information kit and Safe Money book. Nothing but upside here at 855-355-SAF. FE. Healthcare with human kindness is here. It's at Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advance healthcare in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Together, we have a common purpose partnering with you in health and healing using powerful medicine, powerful technology, and the greatest power of all human kindness. You'll know it when you see it because human kindness is in every care site and in every caregiver. Common Spirit Health. Hello, human kindness. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Crude oil prices are up more than 17% on the year so far. That's specifically the price of West Texas Intermediate Crude. The more well-known crude index, Brent prices have risen about 14% so far. It may not feel like it next time you go to the store, but Utah is not one of the worst states for inflation right now. Why does it make us feel better when we know other people have it, it worse? It doesn't make me feel any better. <laughs> the worst of the worst honors go to Florida, where the average inflation for the last 12 months is 3.9%, driven by an influx of new residents and high insurance costs. Unless you're commuting to Florida to get your veggies, <laughs> I don't think it matters one hoot. Uh, if you're a UConn fan, last night's NCAA tournament win means more than bragging rights. Mug Ru Root beer and its mascot dog, which I had no idea, uh, are promising a free root beer to fans since a team with a canine mascot, in this case the Huskies, won it all. They're promising to share how to get your uh, free drink on TikTok and Insta. Let's get a look now at your money at this moment. The futures are up. Dow futures up 59. The S&P is up 15. That's about three tenths of a percent. NASDAQ futures up 72, which is four tenths. Here we go. We're starting to see some of that northbound slowing now uh, on I-15 between Midvale and Murray. Probably the usual stuff. We'll check traffic and weather together next. It's complicated. These days, that's how people even describe their relationship status. When it comes to the latest complexities in your car, it's gotten really complicated. The experts at Amco undergo the most rigorous training to stay on top of the latest car technologies, so there's nothing we can't fix. Well, except for that complicated relationship. When it comes to that, you're on your own. Double A, MCO. Check engine light on, we'll check it for free. Email from school about the incident today. Scary. You know, teachers like me, parents, we don't always know as much as you guys do about what's going on with other kids. Half the time, it's rumors. Yeah, but if you're ever concerned about a friend who's having trouble with alcohol, prescription drugs, anything, you need to tell an adult, someone you know and trust. That can be hard, but speaking up about a problem is what helping a friend is all about. For more information, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov.
Do you find it exhausting getting up from your favorite chair every day? Say goodbye to discomfort and hello to a world of ease. Hi, I'm Jay Broadbent with Alpine Home Medical, and you have so many options when buying a lift chair. For the highest quality, always come to Alpine. Our lift chairs are more than just furniture. They're your ticket to independence and relaxation. Plus, with our spring savings event, we've just marked down some of our chairs that are ready for you to take home. With an unbelievable warranty, you can shop with confidence knowing your comfort is our priority. So stop by any of our 11 locations today and explore our high quality inventory or visit us online at alpinehomemedical.com. That's alpinehomemedical.com. You trust us for news and information in your car. Now trust us at home. KSL News Radio has you covered, keeping you informed on the latest breaking news, weather, traffic, sports, and more. Listen on your Amazon Echo or Google Home device. Just say, Alexa, open KSL News Radio, or listen on the KSL News Radio Listen app. Text the word app to 57500. KSL News Radio, we have you covered. 659 Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, heavy traffic on I-15, middle of the valley, right through 7200 south to 5300 south. Stopping on uh, Mountain View and Bangor near 3500 south as you wait through those traffic lights. And now traffic getting pretty busy both directions of SR-36 in Stansbury Park, especially uh, near Stansbury Parkway and SR-138 intersections. Heather? Things are still looking great in Weburn Davis County. No accidents reported on city streets or the major freeways. No brake lights yet. Southbound I-15 in the Kaysville Farmington area or as you get into downtown Salt Lake. But traffic is definitely filling in on all the roads, so it's starting to get a bit crowded. Eric? Down in Utah County, things still look just fine. Uh, northbound from Provo, two point of the mountain. That's a 20 minute drive you're getting on at University Avenue. It is starting to bunch up on Mountain View Corridor as you head north from SR 73 and uh, right before you get to that Redwood Road intersection. Uh, that's when things are going to slow down a bit. And Redwood, a little bit slow itself, uh, heading from 2100 north up to the, the entrance to Camp Williams. No matter what kind of car you drive, two things are always true. All tires eventually need replacing and all vehicles need servicing. For quality service you can trust, visit your Utah Big O Tires, the team you trust. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. The last of the clouds, at least till Friday, are moving out today. 58 for a high. It's 36 this hour. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios, this is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's 7 o'clock on Utah's Morning News. Good morning, I'm Tim Hughes. And I'm Amanda Dixon. KSL's top story on the 7 o'clock report. The man accused of intentionally running over multiple people and driving off is now being investigated in three other cases. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is live with details. Adam? Amanda, authorities in Summit County have named On Fam as a suspect in a March hit-and-run in Park City that sent a woman to the hospital. And Salt Lake County District Attorney Sim Gill has also released a statement to KSL TV saying that they are screening charges against FAM for another hit and run near 13th East and 9th South, as well as one on T Street and the Avenues that was caught on doorbell video that we first covered here for you on KSL News Radio. FAM has already been charged in four different hit and runs in the Salt Lake Valley dating back to August. He's currently being held without bail. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Fatal car crashes are up in construction zones nationwide, but a new study says Utah is number three in the country. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston joins us live with more. Peter? Tim, the only two states with a higher proportion of fatal car crashes being in construction zones are Texas and Nebraska. That's according to a review of 10 years of crash data by LendingTree. 3.3% of fatal car crashes in Utah happen in these construction zones, and the study finds most of the people killed in these areas are drivers and passengers. In real numbers, this state saw just under 80 fatal car wrecks between 2012 and 2021 in work zones. Lending Tree points to a few key safety tips from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration. First, always avoid texting and driving. Second, slow down when you see road workers. And third, keep an eye out for signs and instructions. Reporting live, Peter Johnston. 
KSL News Radio. Four people are recovering in the hospital after a multi vehicle crash involving a semi truck on US 6. The driver of the semi is in critical condition. The highway was blocked for several hours. This comes just one day after a six year old girl was killed on the highway. Last year, Salt Lake City crews repaired more than 38,000 potholes across the city. I think I found them all. <laughs> uh, repair is once again underway this year, and crews have begun patching up damaged roads. You can report any potholes you see to the city at KSL TV's website. Hill Air Force Base will be blowing up more than 10,000 pounds of obsolete explosives on the west side of the Great Salt Lake. These planned detonations will take place each week later uh, later on through September. Most of these detonations won't have an impact on the valley, but nearby communities may be rattled by the sound. A Pleasant Grove man facing multiple charges after police say he kidnapped his ex-girlfriend and then shot a man she was with. Police say he tricked her into meeting him in Lehigh before taking her back to Pleasant Grove. No injuries were reported. Court documents show the victim had filed a protective order against the man just a few days prior. KSL's top national stories now. The IDF says the largest number of humanitarian aid trucks since the beginning of the war entered the Gaza Strip this week. Many are worried the pause in fighting in southern Gaza may be laying the groundwork for military action in Rafah. ABC's Britt Klenet has more from Israel. Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. More than 400 trucks made their way into the area. Family members of hostages held by Hamas got a private audience with the Pope this week. One of them, Ashley Waxman Bakshi, says the Pope was warm and welcoming and even used the word evil to describe the terrorist organization. He is working in his own channels um, to, to help with, with releasing the hostages and that he is committed to it. Um, and he called Hamas evil, which they are. That meeting taking place yesterday at the Vatican. Chinese-Russian relations seem stronger than ever. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi hailing the bilateral relationship, saying their close ties are hard won and deserve to be carefully maintained. His Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov's trip comes amid Moscow's grinding war in Ukraine and an ongoing effort to align their foreign policies against the U.S. and its allies. Wang says his country would support the convening of an international meeting recognized by both Russia and Ukraine in which all parties could participate equally. Tom Rivers, ABC News at the Foreign Desk. A Utah man who lost his hands in an electrical accident visited Ukraine to help wounded soldiers adapt to their new prosthetics. Sam Matangi tells KSL TV the invasion has taken a terrible toll. There's been 20,000 brand new amputees since the start of the war. Matangi says he was able to find some success stories only five days into his trip. First look traffic on the 7 o'clock report, and here's Andy Farnsworth. And so far, so good. If at least uh, you're on I-15, had some heavy traffic in Midvale, but it's gone now on the freeway anyway. Uh, you are seeing some slow spots on the west side of the valley, including Mountain View and Bangor, trying to get through West Valley. Uh, so far, the drive through Davis and Weber County, slow spots maybe in the typical areas, but not even as bad as it gets some mornings. Same story down in Utah County, particularly Lehigh, Redwood Road, not too bad just yet. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Opening arguments for the trial of Chad Daybell will begin tomorrow. KSL TV's Debbie Worthen has more now that the jury has been selected. According to KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis, it's today some jurors may actually decide how they really feel about Chad Daybell and the crimes he's charged with. Those 10 men and 8 women go to bed knowing that they will spend what's expected to be the next few months with a man's life in their hands. Daybell is accused of murdering the two children of his wife Lori Vallow Daybell and his late wife Tammy Daybell. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Boise preparing to cover the trial alongside KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. Come back to Utah's Morning News tomorrow for the latest from Boise. You can also follow our complete trial coverage at kslnewsradio.com.
Airbnbs continue to rise in popularity, including here in Utah. KS on News Radio's Alessandra Gurr reports. Airbnbs brought in over $1.2 billion in total GDP contribution to Utah last year, according to recently released data by the company. Airbnbs also supported nearly 16,000 jobs in the state and generated $360 million in total tax revenue due to tourists spending money on goods and services while visiting Utah. Overall, Airbnb had a nearly 20% increase in revenue from 2022 to 2023. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. Many states, including Utah, are exploring the benefits of virtual power plants. If you haven't heard of them, KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera is here to explain. Residents and businesses who have solar panels installed can opt into Rocky Mountain Power's WattSmart battery program. The energy that's stored on those batteries can then be used to balance flows on their grid and draw power for their home or office in emergency situations. According to John Whitesides with Rocky Mountain Power, there are roughly 4,000 batteries in Utah being fed by about 70,000 customers. And then essentially what Rocky Mountain Power does is we utilize those batteries every day um, rather than uh, ramping up generation on a like a thermal plant. This is especially useful during peak hours and higher demand seasons like summer. And companies like Rocky Mountain Power look forward to new solutions. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. A Utah alum and cornerback for the Atlanta Falcons is honoring a pair of teammates who passed away while he was still a student. KSL News Radio's Michael Commit is live with more. Michael? Amanda, Clark Phillips III started his NFL career with number 34 on his jersey, but now he changed it to 22 in honor of Ty Jordan and Aaron Lowe. All three of them played with the Utes, but during the 2021 season, Lowe and Jordan both died within nine months of each other. Both of them were best friends living out their dreams, and Lowe took on number 22 on his jersey after Jordan's death. Phillips III announced his jersey change yesterday, and on an announcement on X, included the hashtag 22forever to remember his late teammates. Reporting live, Michael Commit, KSL News Radio. And of course, not a coincidence that he decided to make that announcement this week because the Forever 22 spring game is happening Saturday up at Rice Eccles. 709, let's see how the uh, weather's going to shape up uh, for the rest of the week along with your traffic. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app, save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy? And right now, if you're in Salt Lake County, I 15 traffic has uh, sped back up through the Midvale Murray stretch for now. Uh, but it's still backed up for traffic on Mountain View Corridor starting at the 4100 South intersection. In Tooele County, SR 36, uh, pretty heavy now. Uh, both directions between uh, the south end of Stansbury Park, Bates Canyon Road, and all the way up to SR 138. It's pretty busy in both directions. Heather? We're starting to see quite a bit of congestion now in school zones, especially around Clearfield High School and also Northridge High School in Layton. You don't have any delays, though, on the major freeways in Weber and Davis counties. Everybody's still running at speed on I-15 and I-84 through the mountains to and from Morgan. Eric? Northbound on the 215 eastbound, looking good from 6200 south up past Mount Olympus to the mouth of the canyon and going into Parley's Canyon, I-80 is in solid shape going out to Park City. So far, we don't have any major delays getting into the city itself. If you're down Utah County, I-15, that's rolling along just fine. When you choose Performance Automotive and Bountiful, you're choosing selection. Four locations, Performance Ford Lincoln, Performance Honda, Performance Toyota, and Truck Country. See it all at PerformanceBountiful.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL hourly forecast. We're still in the process of trying to change over this cold air mass. So we do start on the chilly side, 7 a.m. Temperatures in the mid to low 30s, mostly sunny skies. We keep those mostly sunny skies into the lunch hour. Temperatures in the low 50s, light winds out of the northwest. We'll then work into the afternoon, topping out at 58 degrees and mostly sunny. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 36 degrees in Salt Lake City. Are students using AI to cheat or to learn? Maybe both. Mm. We'll learn more in a moment on KSL. The Garfield County Sheriff's Department says damage has been reported along the Panguitch Lake Dam. The structure has uh, traverse cracking on the upper portion, but the conditions are being monitored. In, uh, for the time being, Highway 143 will remain open above Panguitch Lake and no evacuations are necessary. Post-ecliptic Traffic. I don't think I've ever said the word ecliptic before. <laughs> Me either. Uh, millions of people gathered in, in outdoor spaces across North America yesterday to catch a glimpse of the 2024 total solar eclipse. ABC's Andrew Dimper says now they're all heading back. From New Hampshire to Pennsylvania, Arkansas, and Texas, eclipse chasers crowding highways after Monday's cosmic spectacle. <laughs> 
a total solar eclipse sweeping across 15 states, bringing excitement and elation. It's amazing, amazingly beautiful, once in a lifetime, beautiful. Millions in the path of totality watching the sun's corona emerging from the edges of the moon. The eclipse didn't bring too many people to Utah, if any, no. since uh, we're not in the path of totality. Did you know that they uh, occur on average every two years? I did not. And that there's another one coming this year? It's We talk about 20 years away, but that just means we're not going to be in the path of totality here in the U.S. for 20 years. Ah, oh, that's interesting. But every but two years. somewhere in the world. So yeah. just like a storm chaser, you could be an eclipse chaser, I, I bet guess. there are people who do that. You won't have to worry uh, the uh, term path of totality again for a few more years. For months, Betsy Moorhead and her sisters were ordering eclipse-themed merchandise to sell to the thousands who came to Hillsboro, Texas, for its 4 minutes and 23 seconds of totality. I think I'll be excited to get a little bit more sleep. At the same time, she admits... I'm going to be sad. I mean, it's just been kind of one of those exciting things that you lead up to, and it's been really fun to witness this happen in our, in our little town here. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Dallas. A man from Provo had the idea to collect used eclipse glasses, and his effort went viral. Roger Sarkis tells KSL-TV his side business got thousands of emails on Eclipse Day alone. MasterCard, the Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, multiple universities, hospitals. In fact, today I reached out to the Hawaii Department of Education. Sarkis is planning on sending the used glasses to underserved communities and schools in Hawaii and Latin America for the next solar eclipse in October. Trending this hour on the 7 o'clock report, the next eclipse. Looks like hundreds of thousands of us are interested in finding out when that next one will happen in the U.S. So you can start planning now and avoid the FOMO. Country music sensation Morgan Wallen is trending, but probably not for a reason he likes. Last night we lit the liquor he was arrested in Nashville yesterday, accused of throwing a chair off the rooftop of a Music City bar. Wow. Six stories. And it's officially the end of Ramadan, beginning either today or tomorrow, depending on when Muslims first uh, catch a glimpse of the crescent moon. Uh, Eid of Eid al-Fitr is the uh, three-day holiday that marks the end of Ramadan. I hope I said that right. Islam's holiest uh, month, marked by prayer and fasting. Eid involves uh, breaking the fast and celebrating with large meals and family and friends. KSL News Time now, 7.15. <laughs> The three things you need to know this hour. First, Utah is one of many states exploring the possibilities of virtual power plants. I'm KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera. Second, the FBI has arrested an 18 year old Idaho man after investigators say he pledged allegiance to ISIS and was going to carry out attacks on local churches. Third, a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Traffic on I 15 is rolling through the valley in both directions. I 15 is uh, pretty good coming out of Ogden as well. Right now, drive times are still at or pretty close to a minimum in both directions. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly sunny and a solid 7 degrees warmer than yesterday. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 36 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for a look at our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. An 18-year-old in Ohio under arrest accused of plotting to copy the ISIS attack on a Russian concert hall last month. The FBI says Alexander Mercurio had planned to use knives and weapons belonging to his father to kill parishioners at churches. Found in his home, set fires with butane canisters, handcuffs, a knife, and a machete. Mercurio's arrest comes in a state of heightened alert by U.S. law enforcement. Authorities have been concerned about rage ignited by the Israeli Hamas war, and late last week they sent out an urgent bulletin warning that ISIS was trying to use their horrific attack on that Moscow concert to inspire radicals here to conduct U.S. attacks. That's ABC Chief Law and Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas. Norfolk Southern Railroad has agreed to pay $600 million in a class action lawsuit. Here's ABC's Jim Ryan. When 38 cars have a Norfolk Southern freight train hauling hazardous materials derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, a massive cloud of black smoke billowed into the sky. Pollutants flowed into creeks. Assuming a court agrees, people living within 20 miles of last year's derailment will share in a $600 million settlement. A judge in New York denying a last-minute request for a delay and giving the go-ahead for Donald Trump's hush money trial to begin on Monday. ABC chief legal analyst Dan Abrams outlining the questions potential jurors may face. Uh, but it's not just the big picture ones, like have you been to a Trump rally? It's 
What media do you watch? Where do you get your information? They're going to be little subtle questions that are going to be able to tell these uh, lawyers a lot about these prospective jurors. Reaction is continuing to come in to Donald Trump's announcement that the question of abortion should be left up to the states. Many on the right outraged that Trump declined to endorse a national abortion ban. His former vice president, Mike Pence, calling his announcement a slap in the face to millions of pro-life Americans who voted for Trump. And close ally Senator Lindsey Graham saying he respectfully disagrees. This is ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. There's concern that students would use artificial intelligence programs like ChatGPT to cheat in their schoolwork. But are students more likely to cheat or are they using AI to help them learn? ABC's Becky Worley reports. These high schoolers from Hedroy School in Oakland, California, say maybe both. So you use ChatGPT almost as a tutor. More or less, not to ask it for an answer, which I think that's the problem, but rather to explain a concept, to understand the why as opposed to the, just the answer itself. Or if they get stuck on a computer science or math problem. I feel like when you're stuck and you've like tried all these things, it's valid to ask ChatGPT. And naturally, once you ask it, you're going to understand like why it was the answer is the way it is. But some say kids turn to AI when they're desperate. I also think like a lot of chat GPT use comes from uh, like students being overwhelmed with schoolwork. Dr. Denise Pope of Stanford University has been surveying students about cheating for more than a decade. So the fear was that chat GPT was going to unleash a flood of cheating behavior in students. But she says her data is not showing that increase, but adds that parents should still talk to kids about the technology. You want to make sure your student knows what the rules of the school are. So I got a, a written assignment handed in in one of my classes mm -hmm. yesterday that I put through the AI detector, came back 100%. Oh, wow. So that student got zero on that because the entire thing was— You at, laid down that law early, though, didn't oh, you? Oh, they, they with know. With your classes, yeah. You can't, you can't just cop, You can't just put the question I've given you into ChatGPT or whichever AI— and then give me the response that AI gives you. And expect and there, you'll get away with it. And there are giveaways. You know, like most children that, that age do not use the word nonetheless. How old was this Or here too far. It's college, but, you know, oh, most 19-year-olds yeah. don't yeah. say nonetheless. Yeah. So you see words like that in there, and I'm like, hmm, <laughs> I think that's going to go through the AI detector. You don't want to mess with Professor Amanda, <laughs> I'm telling you that. Pope says uh, one metric students can use is, uh, is asking if they're genuinely seeking help or just pushing a button to do the work yeah, for them. Yeah, there's a difference there for sure. Uh, uh, becoming more and more of a challenge, sounds like. That is the in-depth this morning at 15 and 45. 719, traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back over to you, Andy. Amanda, traffic is really backed up on the west side Mountain View corridor. That's going to be your longest stretch of slowdowns from uh, 4100 up to the 3500 south intersection. Some people are getting backed up around 47th south and Bangor. I-15, it's great until you hit Murray and then you dip a little bit below the speed limit in the right lanes coming up on 5300 south. No delays on I-80 out of Tooele County. Heather? We've got our first slowdowns of the morning on southbound I-15. That's coming out of Ogden, heading toward Roy. That's usually due to construction. They're putting the barrels out with lane restrictions in the area. You also still have a lot of congestion on the city streets in Clearfield, Ogden, also over in Layton on Hillfield Road, right near Northridge High School. And then traffic still continues to flow pretty well on Legacy Parkway in the West Side Belt if you use those to get to the airport. Eric. It's getting a little bit busier. Mountain View Corridor uh, in Utah County uh, heading north from SR 73 up to uh, Redwood Road and then further down the line if you are, are continue on 2100 uh, north for eastbounders uh, right at the freeway uh, you're going to see it bunch up a little bit there too and same is true uh, for folks coming out of Highland Cedar Hills uh, SR 92 that's getting a little bit busy at the moment uh, near the mountains. I-15 Utah County no problems. Beat the spring cleaning rush and call Zero Res. Get three rooms plus a hallway. Zero Resified for $99. Visit ZeroRes.com and book your appointment today. Zero Res. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast 58 today. Mostly sunny skies. High pressure continues to nudge in from the California coast on Wednesday. 63 sunny skies. 10 above the normal by Thursday. 71 up to 77 degrees, partly cloudy skies on Friday. We dial it back just a touch on Saturday, 74, mix of sun and clouds. 
partly cloudy on Sunday, 69. We're down to 62, mostly cloudy. No uh, complaints there by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. That sun is about to present itself here any minute over the Wasatch, 36 degrees downtown. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. Tim and I are watching on the monitors right now the parents of Ethan Crumbly, who was one of the uh, school shooters. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who did not pick up their son from school when the school asked them to come and get him. The father bought the son a gun. The kid had asked for you know, mental health help, and they had not got in front. So these two parents are in court right now for sentencing. It'll be really interesting to see what kind of a sentence these two parents get. They're both found guilty of involuntary manslaughter. Yeah, because this is going to set a precedence in any of these school shootings uh, down the line. Yeah. On what the parents knew, what they did to prevent it, what they reported, what they let go. And you know, if just this being in the news causes any parents who have guns in the house to be more careful, to be more vigilant, then bravo. I think they're asking for something like three to five years for each of them. Uh, somewhere in that range, but uh, the sentencing is taking place as we speak. We'll keep an eye on that for you this morning, just like we will. Your uh, markets were about seven minutes away from the opening bell, so stay with us. This is Derek Miller speaking on business. Digital Responsibility is a mission-based tech company dedicated to helping young people use technology responsibly. They also equip educators with the certifications and curriculum they need to become digital educators. Founder Carrie Rogers Whitehead joins us with more. Digital Responsibility is a research-based education company that has trained tens of thousands of parents, students, and educators on digital citizenship. Digital citizenship is the ethical and responsible use of technology. It includes anything from internet safety, media literacy, the digital economy, digital law, digital literacy, and more. We equip administrators and educators with the resources they need to join us in training the next generation to be informed and empowered digital citizens at a school level. With over 200,000 hours working with students, we know what it's like to work hands-on with students in the classroom. Last year, Digital Responsibility won a Cody Award for Best Digital Citizenship Solution from the Software and Information Industry Association. We're trusted by our partners in education and technology as champions in the field of digital citizenship nationwide. If you're an educator, student, or parent looking to learn more, visit our website at response-ability.net. In a world full of technology and cyber threats, it's more important than ever to learn ways to stay safe online. And Digital Responsibility has the resources to help. Learn more at their website. I'm Derek Miller with the Salt Lake Chamber, speaking on business. Hey, have you saved more than $200,000 in an IRA or 401k? You may not realize it now, but you've got a big problem on your hands. And that problem is taxes. Because if you don't take advantage of some tax planning strategies now, Uncle Sam could take a big chunk of your hard-earned retirement savings. Learn how you could reduce the taxes on your IRA and 401k with a free retirement tax savings analysis. It's from Boss Retirement Solutions. If you've saved more than $200,000, schedule your free tax strategy session now by calling 801-896-9622. Discover the tax planning strategies that could dramatically reduce your taxes in retirement. Call 801-896-9622. That's 801-896-9622. Advisory services offered through Boss Retirement Advisors, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm. Insurance products and services offered through Boss Retirement Solutions. Dave and Eugenific. Utah has the largest gender pay gap in the nation. At least that's what the headlines say. I'll explain the latest research that whittles the gender pay gap in Utah down to just a few pennies. Today on Dave and Duchanovic. Watching Utah's Money, brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Tesla is settling a lawsuit over a deadly crash that killed an Apple engineer using autopilot in his Model X. That came just a day before a trial was supposed to start in the case. The settlement details were not disclosed. Tesla's Elon Musk says it won't be long, maybe just a year or two, before AI outsmarts the smartest human on Earth. 
The billionaire co-founder Open uh, AI, which he uh, later sued because he said it uh, no longer supports the original mission to benefit mankind, not to make a profit. The only Amazon warehouse in the country with a labor union is headed into a contentious leadership election. It's Amazon's Staten Island facility. In addition to facing pushback from Amazon itself, there are disagreements within the union's leadership and the union is running out of money and still has no contract. We finished basically flat yesterday at the closing bell, and we're not going to be much different than that at the opening bell today. The Dow is up, but just 23. The S&P has gained 14. The Nasdaq doing a little bit better. It's up four tenths, or 75 points. We have some reduced speeds for northbound drivers in Salt Lake County in a couple of spots. Mountain View Corridor and I-15, for instance. We'll get a look coming up on KSL News Radio. It's that time of year when a lot of people think, okay, I'm going to put my home on the market now. Maybe you've been waiting, but now's a good time. May I steer you in the right direction? You're going to thank me for this because the real estate agent you choose is hugely uh, important for a whole bunch of reasons. One is because it could cost you money if you pick the wrong person and they could walk you into the wrong you know, situation. Yeah. I just uh, went through the process of buying a condo with the Stern team. Cammie there was just wonderful. Well, they come up with things that I didn't even know were possible. And they, they shared with us a story, one of their agents, uh, agents, Emily, uh, was selling a home for a veteran, but the buyer also happened to be a veteran. So she was able to facilitate a loan assumption for the new buyers, which ended up helping both the seller and the buyer. And she was happy to do it because they were veterans on both sides. Yeah. See, I mean, they'll think of things like, you and I would never have thought of no, that. No, never. I, whether, do you need an instant cash offer? They do that at the Stern team. Do you need to buy before you sell? They'll help you, you know, move through. The, do you need flexible fees? They have those. Yeah, and it's always been tough to navigate through all of these things, but it seems like particularly tough right now with interest rates the way they are and a lot of other things. Let the Stern team show you the possibilities. Just go to SternTeam.com. Or Google the Stern team. Opening statements are this week. It'll be a significantly different defense than Lori presented. In the trial of Chad Daybell. Judge Stephen Boyce laid out some ground rules. Get special coverage live from the courtroom. Breaking updates on testimony and legal analysis all this week. The trial of Chad Daybell. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. Get ready for spring with the Greenhouse Show and Advanced Window Products. Affordable windows sold direct to the public at 3052 South 460 West from 8 to 11. Greenhouse Show this Saturday. KSL News Time 729. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Donald Pay App. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Andy? Well, Tim, so far, I-15, the only delays I'm seeing is some slowdowns between Bluffdale's exit and Bangor Highway. And then right as you cross 215 in Murray, uh, up just before 5300 South. Uh, slowdowns on the 201 freeway expanding now. In fact, at 7200 West, there's some backups, and then it uh, slows on the main flow from the Mountain View on-ramp all the way over to Bangor Highway. Heather? We've got lane restrictions southbound 15, approaching 5600 South in Roy. The right lane is blocked, and that is slowing down traffic backed up a bit toward Ogden. As you continue south on I-15, you're going to see more brake lights approaching downtown Salt Lake City. No problems, though, on the rest of the major roadways through Weber and Davis counties. Eric? I-15 Utah County, uh, that's rolling along without any problems. Uh, this is getting a little bit congested if you're exiting at uh, more Pleasant Grove Boulevard, uh, and you do have some usual slowing on Mountain View Corridor as you approach Redwood Road and continue east on 2100 North. you got some uh, standard delays there. Over on the 215 East Belt, that looks good, but... Uh, Foothill Drive starting to get a little bit busy from Parley's Way up to 1700 South. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. It's going to be a beautiful day, 58 for a high today. We get up to 77 by Friday. Right now it's 36 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning, KSL News Time, 7:30. KSL's top story this hour: The FBI has arrested an 18-year-old in Idaho for allegedly planning to carry out terror attacks on local churches. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Idaho and joins us live with details. Adam. 
Amanda, the Department of Justice says 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio had pledged his allegiance to ISIS and that he planned to attack people at churches in Quarter Lane with things like guns, knives, and fire. ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett explains how agents knew to step in just before this could have happened. What the FBI usually does is place either a source or an undercover agent into the conversation until the person starts stating they're actually going to launch an attack. Mercurio is being charged with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. He's now in custody awaiting his first court hearing. Live in Idaho, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. The two men accused of kidnapping and torturing a man inside their Sandy apartment are now facing felony charges. Prosecutors say that Justin McCrory and Malachi Bobo tortured the man for several hours before leaving uh, under the impression that he had died. The man was able to escape and get some help. Police are saying this was not random, uh, but have not given a motive. A political commentator known for his anti-transgender views gave a speech at the University of Utah's College of Social Work last night. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more on the speech and its backlash. Peter? Amanda, crowds aren't here at the College of Social Work today, but they were out in mass yesterday. Daily Wire commentator Michael Nose is known nationally for strong views against gender identity discussions in schools, using terms in recent speeches that many in the LGBTQ community find offensive. At the U, he argued there needs to be education about traditional roles of gender. Obviously, it's dreadful and should be illegal. Um, simple enough, you know. That's Knowles talking about talks of gender identity in schools. Protesters tell the Daily Utah Chronicle the group that invited Knowles, Young Americans for Freedom, chose the College of Social Work specifically to generate a response. One leader from the group says Knowles would reach conservative students they claim don't feel included in campus discussions. Reporting live from the University of Utah campus, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Some Utah men are facing accusations of fraud in last fall's second congressional district election. There's a total of 13 people charged in all, a range of charges, including both felonies and misdemeanors. But at its heart is the race to replace Congressman Chris Stewart, who retired last year. State law says you can't pay signature gatherers and that people gathering signatures have to be state residents. Both of those points are part of these charges, a scheme to hire out of state volunteers and pay them per signature while also getting local residents to say they were the ones who did the work. The charges do not specify which candidate or party these new defendants supported. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national story is now a change in stance from the former president on abortion. After months of hinting that he would support a federal abortion ban, former President Trump said yesterday it's an issue for the states to decide. But ABC's Lely Ipsa reports he did not say what he would do if a national abortion ban came across his desk if he were reelected. At campaign rallies, he often touts the fact that he appointed Supreme Court justices that voted to overturn Roe v. Wade and that he was for certain abortion exceptions, rape, incest, and life of the mother. He's remained vague on that. And Monday's statement wasn't a real huge shock as Trump has claimed before that it's probably better for states to be able to decide this issue. But also at the same time, both publicly and privately, Trump has floated a national abortion ban at 15 and 16 weeks. Conservative activists say they still support both the former president and federal limits on uh, abortion. President Biden is proposing another student loan plan, one that could affect more than 25 million Americans. ABC's Selena Wang on the podcast Start Here. This is something that they believe is really going to resonate with young people who are coming out of college, who have all of that student loan debt. And especially at a time when a lot of his supporters, these young progressive voters, are very frustrated with his administration over his handling of the war in the Middle East. So they're really hoping that student loans is something that's going to resonate with them, something that is going to stick with them when they go to the ballot boxes in November. The administration says they're confident the new proposal will survive legal challenges. First look traffic now, and here's Andy Farnsworth. And so far, the traffic has been uh, typical for what you'd expect. Some slowdowns north 15 in uh, Draper and Murray. We've got some southbound delay now that's gotten really thick between uh, the two. Uh, Ro Union Rose Park, there we go, coming down <laughs> towards 600 north. Whoa. My mind could not find that. And then we've got SR-201 slowdowns crossing most of Magna and West Valley. I'm Andy Farns with the KSL Traffic Center. We know how that feels yeah, for we sure. Know the feeling in here. <laughs> All right, let's talk sports for a minute. The UConn Huskies are once again the top dog of men's college basketball. It really was not in doubt. They, they won all of their tournament games, all six of them by double digits. 
Uh, and uh, by a total combined points of 140 in this tournament. The Huskies finished their dominant March Madness run with a 75-60 win over Purdue last night. UConn, the first team to repeat as national champ since Florida did it back in 2007. NCAA Women's Championship Final brought in 18.7 million viewers this week. The Iowa-South Carolina game set a record as the most watched women's college basketball game ever. I get, and it says since 1992, but we can't figure out what that game was. No. What what would the game have been in 1992 that made it the highest rated till now? I don't know. <laughs> the only sporting events in the U.S. to draw a bigger TV audience since 2019 have been football, the World Cup, and the Olympics. Turns out the March Madness tournament overall helped support hundreds of Utah's local businesses. Several RVers made the trek to Utah last month to watch the tournament, staying at and supporting local Utah businesses instead of campsites through the company Harvest Host. Harvest Host works with local businesses to allow RVs to park on their lots to avoid camping fees and stay closer to city events like the March Madness tournament. COO of the company, Wes Clark, says their whole platform is to help benefit local businesses. Our general philosophy is like these small business operators are, are great at running their business businesses. And so we we simply help drive traffic their way. And that traffic is in the form of RVers. He says in return for no camping fees, RVers purchase goods from the local businesses where they are staying, benefiting the local economy. Alessandra Gurr, KSL News Radio. We have a new crash eastbound I-80 heading up to the top of Parley's Canyon. We'll check that and the rest of your commute just ahead. Spend your workday with a talk show that makes you feel better about the news. Dave and Dejanovic. They have a good dynamic between the two of them. Sometimes I'll take Dave's side and sometimes I'll take Debbie's side. They're great. Dave and Debbie, live from 9 to noon, or podcast the show on the app for KSL News Radio. So you just used bug spray in your home. Now what? Well, between the waiting and waiting for things to dry up and keeping your family away from the mess, it hits you. You could have used Zevo. Unlike other bug sprays that stick around, Zevo goes from kill to clean in seconds. Plus, it's safe for use around people and pets when used as directed. Zevo, people friendly, bug deadly. Ooh, ma. What was that? That is business phone bliss with the UMA cloud phone system. It handles all our voice, video, and messaging needs. You sound very calm. I am. UMA has everything I need to run my business more efficiently, like virtual receptionist, call routing, and video conferencing. And it starts at just $19.95 per month per user, plus taxes and fees. UMA. Nice. Find your business com at UMA.com slash radio. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters. That's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at CertaPro.com. It already feels like home. Say goodbye to morning traffic. Good morning. Baby, it's a brand new day. And hello to Rome, Barcelona, and Santorini. When you sail Europe with Norwegian Cruise Line, you wake up to a new city nearly every day. And we make it easy to get there with free airfare for second guest. Visit ncl.com, call your travel advisor, or 1-888-NCL-CRUISE. Norwegian Cruise Line, ships registry the Bahamas and USA. Restrictions apply. The rest of my life gonna start today. I'm sure there are people in uh, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, waking up that thought, man, it'll never happen here. Mm -hmm. This 18-year-old man has been arrested by the FBI, allegedly, for planning to carry out terror attacks on local churches there. Adam Small is in Idaho and is following up on that story for us this morning. Count on hearing more throughout the day. 739, traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And we go back to you, Andy. Amanda, slowdowns on I-15 increasing now as you head up through uh, Draper, as well as around the South Interchange, 201 freeway. Add an extra five to seven minutes to get from Magna all the way over to 215 because of backups. And then you got a lot of them on the northbound side, uh, Bangor in South Jordan and Taylorsville. And then now some southbound Bangor delays coming down towards that 134th South intersection. Heather? We've got a crash southbound I-15 in Salt Lake. This is right before you get to the 1000 North exit in Rose Park. 
It's blocking two left lanes, the HOV lane and the left lane next to that, and the left shoulder. Now, eventually, UHP says they're going to stop all traffic for a few minutes to try to get the vehicles moved off to the 1000 North exit. So that's going to cause even bigger delays than you have now. Traffic is backed up to the north interchange. The good news is the rest of the roads in Weber and Davis County are moving pretty well. Eric. Through Lambs Canyon eastbound I-80, we got a crash heading up to the top of Parley Summit. This is causing a little bit of slowdown. So as the crash has been pushed over to the right side, it looks like it may still be blocking one right lane there. Uh, and once you get past that, uh, no problems getting over to the Kimball Junction exit and then south on 224 to go into Park City. But westbound on Kearns Boulevard, you got your usual slowdowns going into Park City from US 40. I-15 Utah County, we've got some delays now going past Timpanogos Highway, heading up to Point of the Mountain. Revere Health encourages you to schedule your preventative care and annual checkups to help increase the potential to live your most healthy and active life. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner in life. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. How about mostly sunny skies today with a high of 58 degrees. Beautiful. 41 overnight with mostly clear skies. Tomorrow's mostly sunny, 63. We're to the 70s by Thursday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Sunny downtown this hour, 36 degrees. I'm excited to share this story with you coming up in a couple of minutes about this Weber State student who has been called a walking miracle. We'll explain just ahead on KSL. Stay with us for that, but right now it's time for Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, and it's brought to you by the law offices of Jordan Wilcox. It was the year the Titanic slipped to the bottom of the ocean, 1912. That same year, people were tapping their toes to this little ditty. He always sings raggedy music to the cattle as he swings. Back and forward in the saddle on a horse, a pretty good horse. I have no idea how Ragtime Cowboy Joe became one of the best known songs of the year because the radio hadn't even been born yet. But 1912 is the year John Alfred Tinniswood was. And today he's still going. Over the weekend in Southport, England, the Guinness Book of Records went to John's nursing home with a big plaque. John, Hmm. I'm pleased to confirm that at the age of 111 years, 222 days old, you are the oldest man. Congratulations. You wouldn't guess he's 111. He still has some hair. He's still with it. He gets up in the morning unassisted. Bless him, he listens to the news on the radio. But when John talks, you have to strain to catch what he's saying when they ask, John, what's the secret of long life? Just luck, I think. It's just luck. I don't have a special diet. He doesn't have a special diet. No, I don't smoke. He doesn't smoke. But the secret, let's see if you can tell what he's saying. If you think too much or you eat too much or you walk too much if you do too much of anything you're going to suffer eventually if you drink too much if you eat too much if you walk too much if you do too much of anything you're going to suffer eventually his words so john tinniswood attributes his longevity to moderation he eats fish and chips but only on fridays and that's how john tinniswood says he became the world's oldest man His title took 111 years to earn, but no matter what happens next, a title that's his till his final breath. Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News, only on KSL News Radio. So that's like what 30, 40 years beyond the average yeah. person. Yeah, think about that's that. That's a whole nother lifetime on top of the average person. And at, and at uh, 111 years old, he's ahead of me because Jeff said he still has hair. <laughs> yeah. And he wakes up every morning and is still with it. <laughs> I lack those two things in my life. But I love that that message about moderation. (laughs) Yeah. There's truth in that. Even if you walk too much, you're going to end up having bad knees or ankles or something. So do everything in moderation. Thank you for that, Jeff. And it's brought to you by the Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox. IRS harassing you? The Law Offices of Jordan Wilcox can help. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. Hi, I'm Utah tax attorney Jordan Wilcox. When the IRS invades your life, it's never good news. My name is Jim. So I went through a difficult time with a divorce. Um, then the economy crashed. I was out of work. Combination of the way that my ex-wife was filing the tax returns caused mine to get rejected. And I found myself in a difficult situation that I didn't know how to get out of. Don't face the IRS alone. With everything in your life at stake, don't trust just anyone. I could not believe that it was even possible. I had hoped for something. 
never dreamt in my wildest dreams he would get what he got. You need someone to fight for you. We owed 80300 and something, and I paid $1,000. Visit TaxHelpUT.com and get relief today. Let's solve your tax problems now. Visit TaxHelpUT.com. It was incredible. Do yourself a favor. Call Jordan Wilcox. That's TaxHelpUT.com. Good morning, KSL News Time, 745. The three things you need to know this hour. First, hundreds of RVers visited Salt Lake last month during March Madness, bringing money to the economy by supporting local businesses during their stay. I'm KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr. Second, Hill Air Force Base will be blowing up more than 10,000 pounds of obsolete explosives on the west side of the Great Salt Lake. These planned detonations will take place each week later on through September. Nice to know that in advance. Let's get a look at traffic and weather together here. A lot of slow spots. South 15, a crash in Rose Park's got you back to the north interchange. Eastbound 80, a little slowing prior to the summit from a crash. And I-15 delays in Lehigh just before Point of the Mountain as well. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. The warming trend starts today and tops out Friday. I'm Matt Johnson. And right now, 35 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Time for KSL's top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. James and Jennifer Crumbly in a Michigan courtroom right now for their sentencing on involuntary manslaughter charges. They are the parents of Ethan Crumbly, who shot and killed four students at his high school in 2021. Prosecutors say the Crumblies did not do enough to stop their son's mass shooting. Settlement reached. Norfolk Southern Railroad has agreed to pay $600 million to settle a class action lawsuit related to the fiery derailment of a train in Ohio in last year. A New York judge rejecting last-minute arguments from Donald Trump's legal team that the Stormy Daniels hush money case should be thrown out or moved out of Manhattan. At this point, it seems pretty clear that this case is moving to trial. These issues have been litigated. They've been addressed. And I think that the chance that this isn't going to begin on Monday is very small. ABC chief legal analyst Dan Abrams. Under arrest in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, an 18-year-old who the FBI says was plotting to attack area churches and kill parishioners. This is ABC News. All right, let's go in depth here. A Weber State student has been dubbed the walking miracle after surviving cardiac arrest. Aubrey Young was on a uh, study break when she collapsed. Fellow respiratory therapy student Allie Green raced into action and performed CPR until first responders arrived. The two students have been close all throughout their college experience, but now say they are bonded for life. Green attributes her knowledge of life-saving measures to everything she's learned in the respiratory therapy program. Young says she may not have survived if not for her friend's quick thinking. I probably wouldn't have. I mean, I've watched shows and stuff, and you, like, think you would know, but... When you're in a moment like that, your body goes in, like, fight or flight response, So, and you're just in complete shock. Like, it is so hard to think of what you're supposed to do. So I think without the underlying training that I had, I would have completely frozen. I wouldn't have known what to do. So I'm just grateful that I had the training that I do and that I was able to react. You know, we're trained to do all this stuff, and um, when we're working in the hospital or at clinicals, like, it's not out of the ordinary to have to do chest compressions or CPR and whatnot, but, like, having it um, happen to you outside of the hospital when you're absolutely not expecting it to one of your good friends, it's, like, such a crazy thing, and like Ali said, like, she could have just frozen and not know what to do but she you know her and the other people they jumped right in and they started helping and like it's just crazy and I'm so grateful for them and I would encourage anybody who can to um, get their CPR certification because you really never know what could happen and it could genuinely like be the difference between life and death for someone. Wow Uh, the two do say that there were some good Samaritans that came to the students aid as well They helped check uh, Young's pulse and did some chest compressions. Young was diagnosed with a condition that causes lethal arrhythmia if her body endures too much physical or emotional stress. She tells KSL News Radio she feels like she has a second shot at life after surviving that scare, and she's proud to be a first-generation college graduate. That's a great friendship story. KSL News Time now is 749. Let's uh, check the drive again if you're still making your way in this morning. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Andy looks good from here. Well, it depends on where you are. Right now, there are some stretches of I-15 where you will be at the speed limit, but there's a couple where you're going to hit the brakes, including uh, between about 123rd and 106 south, and then 
a longer stretch starting right before the 7200 south overpass and going up into Murray. Bangor and Mountain View both seeing West Valley delays. We've got backups on SR201 right now from uh, 80th West all the way over to just before Bangor Highway. Make me wonder if there's something in traffic somewhere over there. Heather? Well, if you're southbound I-15, you're going to be pretty slow coming from 31st Street in Ogden all the way down to Roy. That's due to lane restrictions. But then once you get into Woods Cross, it is stop and go all the way into downtown Salt Lake. That was due to an earlier crash that's now been cleared. It had been blocking a couple of left lanes, so it's just going to take time for those residual delays to clear out. And city streets are fairly congested as well, especially in Clearfield. Eric? We're looking at some delays northbound I-15 in Utah County. we got a couple of spots that are pretty close together. Uh, one is right after you move past 2100 north of to Triumph Boulevard. Then you have a little brief respite uh, as you head up towards uh, Tempanogos Highway. And then you've got some more slowdowns from that point up to Point of the Mountain. You might have a crash as part of the mix there. 2100 north traffic uh, now very slow for eastbounders approaching 2300 west. And the freeway and Mountain View Corridor also slow approaching Redwood Road. Box Elder County has gone to the birds. Spring migration is here at Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge. See what visitors are chirping about with Box Elder County. For info, activities, and more, visit BoxElderCounty.com. I'm Eric Butler on the KSL Traffic Center. The seven-day forecast is brought to you by Performance Automotive. Bountiful, that's a pretty morning out there, Matt. Oh, yeah, we love to see the sunshine, and that'll be the trend for the rest of the week. Going 58 today as high pressure makes the move into the West Coast. 63 tomorrow, sunny skies. Blue skies on Thursday, 71. A little more cloud cover on Friday, but still beautiful with a high of 77 degrees. We'll go 74 on Saturday, partly cloudy. Things have trended warmer on Sunday, 69, partly cloudy. And mostly cloudy skies on Monday, 62. I mean, that's a seven-day stretch we haven't seen yet this it, season. It's fantastic. So if we're going to be knocking on the door of 80, are they going to be 90 in St. George by Friday? I have a forecast high of uh, 87, so yeah. Wow. They're inching up on it. All right, here we go. Uh, sunny skies downtown just to get out and enjoy today. It's 37 degrees. Progressive presents advice on new teen drivers. You know, the hardest part about oh, teaching your teen to drive is the chafing from the seatbelt. But the best part is the grip strength you build in your knuckles. Okay, now let's pull out of the driveway. Here's another tip. Offset a chunk of the cost of adding a teen to your insurance with Progressive's teen driver discount and get a break from the break. Progressive Casual Teen Insurance Company and Affiliates not available in all states or situations. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. I'm, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. Common Spirit Health. Hospitals, clinics, and caregivers all connected to advance health care in Colorado, Kansas, and Utah. Health care with human kindness is here. Hello, human kindness. You know that feeling? You rake up all that crud in your garden after a long, hard winter, and you give your grungy deck a good pressure wash after a long, hard winter, and then you see your air conditioner out there and think, how do I make sure the AC is okay after a long, hard winter? Whipple that away. Checking your AC in the spring to make sure it's ready for summer is my job. Make your problem my problem. Whipple Service Champions. To book your $27 AC tune-up, visit whipplethataway.com. Hi, friends. Dan the Laptop Man here from PC Laptops. I get a lot of emails with feedback from customers. Here's one. Dear Dan, I just had the best experience ever. I bought a computer from Shane at your State Street store. I asked several what I thought were really stupid questions. Shane was super courteous and made me feel comfortable through the whole process. People need to understand how important it is to support a local company, especially when your experience is so good. PC Laptops really does love me. Signed, satisfied. I love hearing feedback like that. It really just gives me the chills. It's the whole reason why I got into the computer business in the first place. 
You can get a brand new PC Laptops desktop and they start at only $29 a month and it comes with a lifetime warranty. That means if anything goes wrong, we're going to take care of you. Just check us out at PCLaptops.com. That's PCLaptops.com. At PC Laptops, we really do love you. Dave and Eugenific. Utah has the largest gender pay gap in the nation. At least that's what the headlines say. I'll explain the latest research that whittles the gender pay gap in Utah down to just a few pennies. Today on Dave and Duchanovic. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. The same leading banker who's predicting interest rates could hit 8% is also uh, talking up the future of artificial intelligence on your money. J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon's annual letter to shareholders predicts that AI will transform much of business and society. He actually said he thinks it's going to be as impactful as electricity was. He says uh, we've barely scratched the surface of that potential. Your money at this moment, the Dow is down 64 points. That's less than two-tenths of a percent. We're at 38,828. S&P is up three. The Nasdaq up 53. Got a crash northbound I-15 in Lehigh right at the Triumph Boulevard overpass. Uh, HOV and left lanes are blocked right now, so be careful there. We'll check traffic and weather together next. Let's see. Today is April 9th. So if you went online to sodaweightloss.com today, that's S-O-T-A, weightloss.com, stands for state of the art. If you did that, by the time it got to, let's see, April, May, June, by the time it got to June 9th, I lost 34 pounds in just a little over two months. Mm-hmm. It was less than three months. So just the, June 9th. So by the time you have that college graduation or whatever it is that's coming up, you could be 30 or whatever it is for you, pounds light. How would that feel? Would you like that? Yeah, because the average male loses three to five, the average female two to three. And here's the per other week. thing. Per week. Yeah. Uh, the uh, alternative or the uh, rest of that story is that you'll have that weight off by June of this year and June of next year. It'll still be gone. Now, that's the huge thing because I've, I've lost weight before, but I never kept it off until soda. Yeah, soda weight loss uh, can really help you or somebody in your family change the way you look at food and keep that weight off. It's their same goal, too. With the help of that nutritionist who is right at your fingertips for as long as you need them, just go to sodaweightloss.com, spelled S-O-T-A. That is uh, stands for State of the Art. Wasatch Front Businesses and Property Managers. Go Pave Utah provides all asphalt repairs for your parking lot. For patching and paving along the Wasatch Front, contact Go Pave Utah. GoPaveUtah.com. You wouldn't trust a butcher to babysit your pet pig. You wouldn't trust a lumberjack to repair your antiques. Or a professional wrestler to be your massage therapist. So why would you trust anyone but Amco to fix your car? For over 50 years, we've been the trusted experts in transmission repair. Check out Amco's multiple financing options. So you can fix it fast and pay it off slow. Double A, MCO. Jazz fans, secure your seats for the next NBA season by getting season tickets. Season ticket members get special perks like team store discounts, savings on in-arena concessions, and more. Be there for every moment during the 2024-25 season by calling or texting 801-355-DUNK today. 801-355-DUNK. Let's go, Jazz. 759 Traffic and Weather Together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda traveled on I-15. Travel times are going to be increased if you have to take I-15 through Midvale, 7200 South up towards 53rd South. The 201 freeway backed up from 8000 West all the way past Mountain View, but it does clear up before you hit Bangor Highway. Uh, and then if you're on Mountain View or Bangor traveling through West Valley right now, uh, there's going to be extra wait time at most of the intersections, if not all. Heather? Our worst delays right now in Davis County are southbound I-15 as you leave Bountiful and head all the way into downtown Salt Lake. All the stop and go traffic was due to an earlier crash near Rose Park that's now been cleared. A lot of people are opting to take Legacy Parkway, so we're starting to see slowdowns now between Centerville and Bountiful. Eric? Got a delay, a lot of delays now in Lehigh from 2100 North up to Triumph Boulevard. That's because you got a crash uh, just before the Triumph Boulevard overpass and blocking off uh, two left lanes, uh, and one of those is an HOV lane, uh, and so make it three lanes total, and that's going to cause some delays. 
With Two Brothers Mattress low price guarantee and their 100 night trial, your locally owned Two Brothers Mattress is your number one choice for Tempur-Pedic mattresses. Learn more at twobrothersmattress.com. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. 58 today, 63 tomorrow by Friday, 77 degrees. We're at 37 now to start your morning. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good morning. KSL News Time is 8 o'clock. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Tim Hughes. And I'm Amanda Dixon. KSL's top story this hour. The man accused of intentionally causing several hit and runs in the Salt Lake Valley is now being investigated in three other potential cases. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is live with details. Adam? Amanda, the Summit County Sheriff's Office confirms that they're investigating whether or not On Fam could have been behind the wheel of a hit and run in Park City one week before he was arrested in Salt Lake City in March. And in a statement, Salt Lake County District Attorney told uh, Sim Gill told KSL TV that they are screening potential charges for Fam in two hit and runs, one on 13th East and 9th South, the other that was caught on doorbell video in on T Street in the Avenues that we first cover here for you on KSL News Radio. Fam has already been charged with multiple counts of attempted murder and four hit and runs dating back to August. To date, he's been at minimum investigated for seven different hit and runs. Live Adam Small, KSL News Radio. Utah, it turns out, is number three in the country for fatal construction zone cr- car crashes. That's according to a new study. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with the details. Peter? Tim, I've been lucky not to encounter any work zones on my drive out here this morning, but fatal car crashes and construction zones are going up all around the country. Between 2012 and 2021, the number jumped by over half. The Lending Tree study looks at a decade of crash data from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration, and it's showing that nearly 80 people died in Utah in these work zones, putting the state behind only Texas and Nebraska on the list passengers and drivers were usually the ones to die in these wrecks. It's not for lack of legal rules against this though, because Utah and these other states have laws that aim to slow drivers down. And Utah has given reports about people who continue to, in their words, go too fast past uh, their workers out in the field. Reporting live from Salt Lake City, Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. Four people are recovering in the hospital after a multi-vehicle crash involving a semi-truck on US-6. The driver of the semi is in critical condition. The highway was blocked for several hours. This comes just one day after a six-year-old girl was killed on the highway. KSL's top national stories this hour. The Israeli Defense Forces say the largest number of humanitarian aid trucks since October. More than 400 have entered the Gaza Strip. But there's increasing fear that a pause in the fighting could lay the groundwork for future military action. Gaza's second largest city now unrecognizable. After months of Israeli bombardment, residents returning to the destruction after the IDF withdrew all its combat units from Han Yunus. Palestinians describing the trail of devastation left behind. Homes crushed and burned, overturned cars and trucks littering what used to be streets. This woman says her house is now a mountain of debris. Despite pulling ground forces from southern Gaza, the Israeli military saying this war is not over. That's ABC's Brooke Clenet reporting from Israel. Family members with loved ones being held captive by Hamas got a private audience at the Vatican with Pope Francis. And family member Ashley Waxman Bakshi says the Pope did not hold back. Evil. He called them bad guys and evil. And um, he was very clear that the hostages need to come home. I think, you know, we, we can all agree. She also described the Pope as warm and welcoming. Chinese-Russian relations are stronger than ever as the foreign minister of both uh, nations meet in Beijing. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi hailing the bilateral relationship, saying their close ties are hard-won and deserve to be carefully maintained. His Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov's trip comes amid Moscow's grinding war in Ukraine and an ongoing effort to align their foreign policies against the U.S. and its allies. Wang says his country would support the convening of an international meeting, recognized by both Russia and Ukraine, in which all parties could participate equally. Tom Rivers, ABC News at the Foreign Desk. Double amputee Sam Matungi traveled to Ukraine to help wounded soldiers adapt to new prosthetics. He tells KSL TV he wanted to help new amputees find simple success stories. We were trying to bring them a sense of independence 
it kind of put me back in my spot where I was. They're going to succeed and be more happier. Matangi says regaining independence helps us know why we're here on the earth. And he's back now with your first look traffic. Got a crash on I-15 in Lehigh just before the uh, Timpanogos Highway exits. Got you backed up past 2100 North in Lehigh. Additional slowdowns on the freeway in Midvale. Southbound traffic is backed up coming down to the 215 North Interchange through Woods Cross and then breaks up for a sec and you get back into it again trying to get down past 600 North in Salt Lake City. A lot of slow spots right now as we've hit the peak of the commute. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Opening arguments for the trial of Chad Daybell begin this week now that the jury has been selected. KSL TV's Debbie Worthen reports. Chad Daybell faces charges of murdering J.J. Vallow, Tylee Ryan, and his late wife, Tammy Daybell. His trial is expected to last longer than his wife, Lori's, because he faces the death penalty if found guilty. Now, a jury found Lori guilty back in May. She was sentenced to consecutive life sentences in July. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Boise preparing to cover the trial alongside KSL legal analyst Greg Scordis. Come back to Utah's Morning News tomorrow for the latest from Boise. You can also follow our complete trial coverage at kslnewsradio.com. Airbnbs are becoming increasingly popular around the globe, but it seems especially here in Utah. KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr has more. Over $1.2 billion were contributed to Utah's GDP in 2023 from the Airbnbs in the state, according to data from the company. Airbnbs also helped support over 15,000 jobs in the state and generated $360 million in total tax revenue. Overall, Airbnb had a 19.2% increase in revenue in 2023. Utah is one of a handful of states utilizing the potential of virtual power plants. KSL News Radio's Eric Cabrera spoke with Rocky Mountain Power. Virtual power plants are batteries that are installed where there are homes or businesses collecting solar energy. Residents, for example, can sign up for the Watt Smart Battery Program through Rocky Mountain Power and get incentives for helping charge those batteries that can be used to balance the grid during peak load times or even draw power during outages. About uh, oh, a little over 70,000 solar customers here in Utah, and we've got a, just a little over 4,000 batteries. That was John Whitesides with Rocky Mountain Power. Some states have even passed bills to further incentivize others to contribute. You can learn more about the WattSmart program on their website. Eric Cabrera, KSL News Radio. Accidents now causing I-15 delays southbound approaching downtown Salt Lake and northbound uh, in the area of Lehigh. We'll check them both coming up next. A legacy of news and information going back generations. I'll have the radio on. I learned that from my mom. She's listened to KSL her whole life, and I grew up listening to KSL radio, too. I really enjoy listening in the morning. We have you covered at KSL News Radio. Do you know the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day? At slcfatloss.com, we know the secret. Our unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. If you'd like to lose unhealthy fat without counting points, no exercising, no prepackaged meals, no surgery, and no injections with a risk of serious side effects, go to slcfatloss.com now to schedule your free consultation in person or virtually. This is Dave Noriega. If you're done being exhausted, struggling with that stubborn old weight problem, Problem, do what I did. Check out slcfatloss.com. On their program, I lost 57 pounds in 60 days. Now, results vary, but for a limited time, you can get $200 off when you mention my name, Dave Noriega. Just go to slcfatloss.com. Many clients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two. That's up to a pound per day. For your free private weight loss consultation, call 801-450-1882 or go to slcfatloss.com. That's slcfatloss.com. Results may vary. Can we talk about something difficult to discuss? Are you going through a difficult financial time? You have equity in your home, but nobody can help. I'm Jason Erskine with American Home Loans, and we have created the Bridge Loan Program to use your equity regardless of your credit at this time. The Bridge Loan can be used to pay debts, collections, IRS liens, divorce settlement, or just simply improve your property. Give us a call at 801-262-2221. This loan creates a bridge between now and a much brighter future. During COVID, one of our clients had over $85,000 on credit cards. Their scores were too low to borrow on their home. We were able to save them $2,000 a month, and after eight months, they qualified for a conventional loan and improved their situation. Look, the consultation is free. Please let us see what we can do for you. Call 801-262-2221. That's 801-262-2221. Or go to AmericanHomeLoans.com. 
That's AmericanHomeLoans.com. NMLS 245422, Equal Housing Lender. Boy, that traffic on uh, I-15 southbound really stacked up now. Let's get right to it with traffic and weather together. Every 10 minutes on the nines, brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. It is stop and go, Andy. Yep, several spots. In fact, I'm looking at a stretch of 201 that's like that from the whole way between 7200 West and Magna, uh, all the way over to Bangor Highway. And then heavy traffic stays with you, although you do speed up a little bit until you finally hit Redwood Road. Mountain View and Bangor are still seeing delays at your intersections northbound and West Valley. I-15, uh, all clear around Point of the Mountain, at least on the Salt Lake County side, up into Midvale. But then you'll hit the brakes for a couple of minutes up into Murray. Heather? And we have delays coming out of Weber County, southbound I-15 between Ogden and Roy due to construction and lane restrictions. As you continue on I-15, you'll hit stop and go traffic from Woods Cross all the way into downtown. That was due to an accident that's now cleared. A lot of people are opting to take Legacy Parkway, so we're seeing more congestion than normal on Legacy as you head between Centerville and Bountiful. Eric? The backups northbound I-15 are uh, backing up uh, in Lehigh, all the way to Lehigh's Main Street. This all started with a crash at uh, Triumph Boulevard, and we've still got... uh, the HOV lane blocked off, and uh, one left lane, uh, the far left lane is getting through, although that's uh, pretty close to the emergency vehicles that are on hand. So uh, just be careful going by there. Expect a lot of delays. And getting over to the freeway 2100 north, also slow. Redwood Road starting to stack up now, approaching 2100 north, and then heading up to Camp Williams. Don't miss the incredible event sale at Dave's Bernina in Provo and St. George. Save thousands on new Bernina machines used for a recent three-day event that come with full warranties while supplies last. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Take a look at this warming trend. 58 today, mostly sunny skies. Rises to 63 tomorrow with azure blue skies. We keep them clear Thursday, 71, up to 77 on Friday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. It is a very sunny 37 downtown. We'll talk to Debbie Dijanovic in a moment. She says Utah has become a mini California. What's she talking about? I don't know, but I don't like the sounds of that. <laughs> She'll join us just ahead on <laughs> KSL News Radio. Uh, always remember to watch for us streaming live at KSLNewsRadio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news traffic and weather station. All right, let's see if we can save you some money today. And there's no doubt in my mind we can do that by just telling you to go to any of the four locations of NPS. Before I started shopping regularly at NPS, I inflation had hit my family like it has yours. And we were just cutting out as many things as we could to make ends meet. And then we started shopping at NPS. And now... We have a little extra money that we can go out to dinner as a family if we want to once in a while. It's, I mean, it's a, it has a profound impact on your family. Yeah, and for you, it started with groceries. But then, uh, particularly at the Salt Lake location, you just uh, walk to the other side of the building. And I mean, everything you can think of yeah. is available at that markdown price of 20 to 70 percent off. But then to make room for a shipment that they know they've got coming in the next day, they price it even lower. So right now, you can save an additional 50% off clothing and clothing accessories and boots and slippers and bedding and linen. So that with that additional 50%, you're you're really paying pennies on the dollar. But wait, there's more. <laughs> if you're shopping at the industrial store in Salt Lake City, they always find a way to make it fun. You spend $200 or less, and you're going to get an additional 15% off your entire purchase. If you spend more than 200 you'll get an additional 20% off your entire purchase. So save your family some money. Shop at NPS. It stands for National Product Sales, but we think of it as a nice place to save. There's one near you. You'll find them in Leighton and Orem and two stores in Salt Lake City. If there's a problem during your siding, gutter, or window installation project, most contractors will try to hide it, ignore it, or blame someone else. It's called passing the buck or turning a blind eye, or my favorite, finger pointing. My question is... Where is the accountability? Tim Jr. here from RGS Exteriors, and look, sometimes problems just happen, no matter who you hire. Maybe the wrong color siding gets delivered, despite the order being placed perfectly, or maybe a downspout gets cut short. Honestly, it could be anything. At RGS Exteriors, mistakes are rare, but if something goes wrong, I can absolutely, positively, 100% guarantee you we'll never hide it, and we'll never pass the buck. We'll make certain everything turns out right for you. That's people over profits. That's the RGS Exteriors way. For a free estimate on siding, gutters, or windows, call 801-280-3110, rgsexteriors.com, rgsexteriors.com. Everyone's house is different, but they're all the same in one way. 
We all have those places where the Wi-Fi just won't go. I mean, for you, maybe it's the attic. For me, it's my basement. Well, if you had wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you could worry less about these dead spots. Finally. With wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity, you get fast speeds throughout your home, a reliable connection in every room, and power for all your devices. Even when everybody's online. That's wall-to-wall Wi-Fi. Only on the Xfinity 10G network. Get wall-to-wall Wi-Fi from Xfinity for a reliable connection throughout your home now through June 21st. New customers can get started with gig speed internet for $25 a month for two years with no annual contract and free Wi-Fi equipment included when you add unlimited mobile. Here's what you do. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY. That's 1-800-XFINITY. Or visit a store today. KSL News Time 815. The three things you need to know this hour. First, a new study shows Utah's number three in the country for fatal car crashes in construction zones. I'm KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston. Second, a Utah teacher is collecting and donating used eclipse glasses. He plans on sending them to underserved schools for the next eclipse. Third, it's a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. 915 still backed up in Lehigh from a crash. Slowdowns in Midvale on the northbound side. Coming south, backups go from North Salt Lake into downtown. Plus 201's been slow from Magna to West Valley for a while now. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. Mostly sunny and a solid 7 degrees warmer than yesterday. I'm Matt Johnson. Right now, 37 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. And time for a look at our top national stories. From ABC News. I'm Sherry Preston. A judge is being asked to quickly approve a settlement between Norfolk Southern and the people most directly affected by last year's fiery train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. ABC's Jim Ryan has the details. In the 14 months since a Norfolk Southern freight train hauling hazardous chemicals went off the tracks. There's kids having nosebleeds, people having seizures, there's respiratory issues, people have chemical bronchitis. East Palestine, Ohio resident Ashley McCollum is among the people living within 20 miles of the derailment who will share in a six hundred million dollar settlement with Norfolk Southern. Jim Ryan, ABC News. In court this hour, James and Jennifer Crumbly, whose son Ethan shot and killed four students at his Michigan high school last year. They were convicted of involuntary manslaughter for not doing enough to stop the mass shooting. In New York, it's looking more and more likely that Donald Trump's criminal hush money case will start on Monday as scheduled. A judge last night denying Trump's attempts at delaying the case even further. Here's ABC's Aaron Katursky. We're less than a week before former President Trump's supposed to stand trial here in New York, and an appeals court here has already rejected one of his attempts to delay and is expected to take up another one a bit later today. Trump's attorneys would like to stop everything and move the case out of Manhattan. They say there are too many potential jurors around here who've been exposed to pre-trial negative publicity. Prosecutors say Trump should have nothing to complain about, though, since much of the publicity is his own doing. 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio under arrest in Idaho. The FBI says he was plotting to carry out killings in churches in Idaho, inspired by last month's ISIS attack on that concert hall in Russia. They talked about using knives, fire, and possibly weapons. If, in fact, he did launch that, had the possibility of harming a lot of people. Former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Europe's highest human rights court ruling today countries must better protect their people from the consequences of climate change. You're listening to ABC News. All right, Deb's here, and I'm worried about this. She says we're becoming a mini California. We are becoming a mini California. The Wall Street Journal says so. Uh, They didn't say it in as many words, but Wall Street Journal um, just named Utah as uh, the tuck. Uh, America's hottest job market for tech, Utah. And they did a lot of analyzing of data. Uh, they used Moody's Analytics. Uh, they teamed up with Moody's to determine well, that's good. that. Yeah. I don't mind well, that. Well, I think it is good. I think it's a double edged sword, Amanda. Um, and it has to do with home prices as we attract uh, more Californians from the tech industry in California to Utah, to our silicone slopes, uh, silicon, 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 sil- silicon slopes yeah. uh, down in the Lehigh area. I think it's going to it, it potentially increase home prices. We're already right behind California. It's Hawaii, California, and Utah, in the top three spots for the most unaffordable housing prices in the nation. And a lot of Californians sell their home and have enough equity to bring cash to Utah and pay cash for a home. I mean, to them, our home prices are a bargain right mm-hmm. now, you yeah. know, even at five or six 
six or seven hundred thousand, they might be able to plop down uh, some cash on that. And then what does that do? That squeezes out new home buyers um, even more so, and even local competition, people who want to stay in Utah. But one of the things in this article that stood out to me, and I just had a, a chuckle at, is uh, they said one of the attractive parts about Utah is we've got so much open land and desert here that companies come come to build, can come to build in the desert. Have they been here? Have you been by like Aragonite? How about Goshen? I mean, there's some places out in the desert that are pretty desolate. I'm not so sure that building tech industry out in the wild, wild west in the desert is going to be that attractive for future workers who are coming from, you know, the San Francisco Bay Area or other places in California that are a hub of activity and have a lot of, you know, nightlife and and that kind of thing um, and restaurants to eat at. So, I think there's this kind of this pie in the sky idea about Utah with the open land and desert. But I think when you get out here and you see how desolate some areas are, it might not be quite as attractive. We're going to dig deeper into where this could take home prices today on the Dave and Janovic show. Well, and if you're moving in from California, I have a beautiful six bedroom, three and a half bath. <laughs> I'll let go for a mere one point two million dollars. <laughs> Uh, It'll sell in five minutes, Tim. It is Utah. Bring your cash. That's funny. All right, Dave and Debbie coming up at 9, and this portion of Utah's Morning News is brought to you by Revere Health. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon, Andy. Amanda, travel through the valley, still at its slowest on the 21st South Freeway right now, coming from Tooele County and across Magna. It does clear up before you hit 215 finally, although if you're switching from 215 on to 201, there is some backups on that transition ramp. Main line of I-15, Midvale to Murray, uh, trickling back to a better speed limit. Now just a little bit of stop and go near 7200 South. Heather? Our longest stretch of delays coming out of Davis County are southbound I-15 from Center Street in North Salt Lake all the way into downtown. Now, earlier we had delays on Legacy Parkway as a lot of people were taking that as an alternate. The Legacy Parkway delays have cleared out, but as you transition onto I-215's West Belt from Legacy, that is pretty much a parking lot from Legacy all the way down to the I-80 turnoff that'll take you to the airport. Eric. Several cars involved in a crash northbound I-15 at Triumph Boulevard in Lehigh. That's right, uh, just barely before the uh, overpass, and that's back to things up almost all the way up to Lehigh's Main Street. Uh, the HOV lane is still being occupied, and uh, that's uh, where all of the emergency vehicles and the participants are. Uh, back behind that, you do have northbound slowing through Linden on I-15, and further up ahead of that, after you go past Timpanogos Highway, there's further slowing going up into Salt Lake County. Monster winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. Don't wait for a disaster. Go to the Masters at Master Roof. RoofingUtah.com to schedule your free windstorm assessment today. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. KSL 7A forecast 58 today, mostly sunny skies. High pressure continues to nudge in from the California coast on Wednesday. 63 sunny skies, 10 above the normal by Thursday, 71 up to 77 degrees, partly cloudy skies on Friday. We dial it back just a touch on Saturday, 74 mix of sun and clouds. Partly cloudy on Sunday, 69. We're down to 62, mostly cloudy. No uh, complaints there by Monday. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Sunny and 37 degrees. The seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. T-minus 20 minutes until we give you an additional keyword <laughs> uh, that you can use to win some lower bowl jazz tickets tonight. The Nuggets are in town. Two games left at home. That's all we have. And we've got tickets for you to go see the one tonight. And we'll give you that word in 20 minutes. But right now, just text JAZZ to 57500. You get your name in twice this morning. KSL News Time, 823. A partner is someone you can rely on, someone who has your best interest in mind. A partner is there for you during the good and the bad. They listen, understand, and care. Revere Health is dedicated to providing care for your generation and the next. Revere Health, your partner in health, your partner for life. Advanced Window Products offers grabber window covers. High-end quality with the best warranty. Save 30% off when you mention KSL. 801-850-9100 or advancedwindows.com. Hi, everyone. It's Congressman Blake Moore here. As I've listened to your concerns during my recent in-person and telephone town halls, one thing is clear. Utahns are concerned about border security. 
According to U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the Biden administration's policies have allowed for over 8.5 million encounters nationwide, including over 7 million at the southern border, more than ever before in American history. Record amounts of fentanyl have come through our borders and led to heartbreaking outcomes for families who have lost loved ones to overdoses. For the sake of our community's safety and national security, something must change. This is why House Republicans swiftly passed the Secure the Border Act of 2023 to strengthen our southern border with new technologies, increase the number of Border Patrol agents, end catch and release, and require transparency from the Department of Homeland Security. I will keep fighting to make first district communities safer, and I encourage you to sign up for my weekly e-newsletter and follow me on social media at Rep. Blake Moore to stay updated on my efforts. Paid for by official funds authorized by the House of Representatives. You know, Deb, you and I have had this conversation so many times. We think, oh, I wish I had a little more light here or maybe a ceiling fan there. That's why we love Master Electrical. So anytime we have an electrical problem, we know we can call them and they will give us their upfront pricing guarantee. Because we're not going to do it yourself. We're going to leave it to the professionals. And this upfront pricing guarantee is fantastic. I'm sure you've been bitten by bids in the past where they say, oh, that's going to take half a day. And then two weeks later... The bid and the invoice have nothing to do with each other. Not only will you get their upfront pricing guarantee, but you will never see an upcharge. Their pricing system simply won't allow it. Master Electrical proudly serves from Logan to Santa Quin. They do everything that has to do with electrical, and they're always open, including for emergency services. The phone number to call is 801-543-2222. 801-543-2222 or check them out online at masterelectrical.com. Dave and Eugenific. Utah has the largest gender pay gap in the nation. At least that's what the headlines say. I'll explain the latest research that whittles the gender pay gap in Utah down to just a few pennies. Today on Dave and Duchanovic. Watching Utah's Money brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Let me get a look at the markets and see where they are this morning. The Dow is off 11 points, just a fraction. We're at 38,880. S&P is up three, also a fraction. The NASDAQ up 43, which is a quarter percent. Well, those accidents still causing delays on I-15. Southbound approaching downtown Salt Lake, also northbound in Lehigh. We'll uh, get another peek at all of that with traffic and weather together next. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat, watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us Opening statements are this week. It'll be a significantly different defense than Lori presented. In the trial of Chad Daybell. Judge Stephen Boyce laid out some ground rules. Get special coverage live from the courtroom. Breaking updates on testimony and legal analysis all this week. The trial of Chad Daybell. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. KSL News Time 829. Traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the nines. Brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. Are those accidents on I-15 still a problem, Andy? Uh, well, they've cleared in the Salt Lake Valley and on the 201 freeway. Uh, so s- at least closer to Salt Lake, they haven't been much of an issue. I-15 itself still seeing a bit of delay crossing 215. And the 201 freeway is at its worst between Mountain View and Bangor. Bangor still has a lot of wait time at uh, South Jordan in the construction around 9,800 south, and Mountain View still backed up at 3,500 south. Heather? Speeds are improving. Southbound I-15 coming into downtown Salt Lake, but it's still well under the speed limit as you approach the I-215 north interchange in North Salt Lake and head toward downtown. You also still have delays as you transition off of Legacy Parkway southbound onto the I-215 west belt heading toward the airport. That's going to add an extra seven or eight minutes to your commute getting to the airport and then you have a congestion on some of the city streets in Ogden Roy and Clearfield Eric 
tough luck uh, if you're heading up through with Utah County this morning and didn't exit at Lehigh's Main Street because you're going to be stuck in some delays all the way up past Timpanogos Highway. Now it looks like the two delay stretches we've had have merged into one. Uh, the biggest problem spot is an accident but, uh, still occupying the HOV lane right before the Triumph Boulevard overpass. And as I mentioned, the uh, backups go all the way to Lehigh's Main Street. 2100 north traffic for eastbounders. That's slow as usual going over to 2300 west and then getting on to the freeway entrance ramps. Discover the power of hands-on learning at Tooele Technical College. With affordable, flexible, and achievable technical education, your future begins here. Apply today at tuoletech.edu. That's tuoletech.edu. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. Sunny, and today our high will be 58 degrees, up to 77 by Friday. Right now it's 37 downtown. You're listening to Utah's Morning News with Tim Hughes and Amanda Dixon on KSL News Radio, 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Good morning, KSL News Time, 8:30. KSL's top story this hour. The FBI has arrested an Idaho man who investigators say planned to carry out attacks in the name of ISIS. KSL News Radio's Adam Small is in Idaho with more. The Department of Justice says 18-year-old Alexander Mercurio had pledged his allegiance to ISIS and that he planned to attack people at churches in Quarter Lane this past Sunday. The agent stepped in and arrested him one day before that. An ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett says it's common for them to step in at the last minute. Typically Typically in undercover operations, you let a defendant work all the way up to the moment before he actually wants to launch an attack. Mercurio is now being charged with attempting to provide material support to a foreign terrorist organization. He faces up to 20 years in federal prison if he's convicted. In Idaho, Adam Small, KSL News Radio. More than a dozen people, including several Utahns, face charges tied to a scheme to illegally gather signatures in last year's second congressional district contest. Two of the men are accused of hiring people from out of state to gather signatures in the second district race to replace the retiring Congressman Chris Stewart. For context, Utah law says signature gatherers have to be state residents. According to the documents filed in third district court, they allegedly hired some Utah residents to say they gathered the signatures, not the out of staters. And they're also accused of paying per signature gathered, which is also against the law. All told, 13 people face a variety of both felony and misdemeanor charges. The charges don't say which candidate or party they supported. Becky Bruce, KSL News Radio. A West Valley man is facing several charges after police say he fired 15 rounds into a wall in his apartment while his roommate slept on the other side. Police documents say the 39-year-old was upset about his financial situation and missed his child, so he decided to take his frustration out on the wall. No injuries were reported. A far-right political commentator delivered a speech at the University of Utah, sparking protests from students and some faculty. KSL News Radio's Peter Johnston is live with more on the speech and its backlash. Peter? Daily Wire commentator Michael Knowles is known nationally for strong views against gender identity discussions in classrooms, using terms and speeches that many in the LGBTQ community find offensive. At the U, he argued there needs to be education about traditional roles of gender. Sure, we don't want to tell a little kid about the birds and the bees, but we necessarily will tell them something about family. Protesters tell the Daily Utah Chronicle the group that invited Knowles, Young Americans for Freedom, chose the College of Social Work specifically to generate a response. One leader from the group says Knowles would reach conservative students they claim don't feel included in campus discussions. Peter Johnston, KSL News Radio. KSL's top national stories now. Former President Donald Trump appears to be softening his stance on abortion after months of hinting on the campaign trail that he supports a national ban. ABC's Laley Ibsa reports the former president did not answer key questions. While he said that abortion bans should be left up to the states, he didn't say if there was a certain number of weeks he believes that these bans should take into effect. He didn't say what he would do if a national abortion ban came across his desk if he was reelected as president. Conservative activists today say they still support federal limits on abortion while they maintain their support for Mr. Trump. A new student loan plan could slash debt for millions of Americans, but does it really have a chance of becoming reality? ABC News senior White House correspondent Selena Wang tells uh, the podcast Start Here that the Biden administration is confident. The administration obviously hopes that this would come through before the November elections. In fact, they would hope it would come very shortly before. So the voters will have fresh in their mind the fact that President Biden relieved their student loan debt. And in fact, I was just talking to several voters who say that this is one of the top issues when it comes to who they support for president. 
The latest proposal from the president would cancel up to $20,000 for borrowers. It's estimated it could cost more than or could uh, be more than 25 million Americans. First look traffic now, and here is Andy Farnsworth. We've got uh, slow spots coming in from Davis County because of a crash just before 600 North. That's still got you backed up into North Salt Lake. It's slow coming off Legacy and on to 215 in the same area. North 15's backed up throughout Lehigh as you try to get past that crash near Timpanogos Highway. And you've got Redwood backups as well trying to leave Lehigh as people use that instead of going over to I-15. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. In sports, the UConn Huskies took the men's NCAA championship title once again after a 75-60 win over Purdue last night. Connecticut entered the tournament as the number one overall seed and the favorite to win. It's the team's sixth national championship in program history. UConn also, by the way, the first team to repeat as national champs since Florida did it back in 2007. The NCAA Women's Championship Final brought in 18.7 million views this week, or viewers, I should say. The Iowa-South Carolina game set a record as the most watched women's college basketball game, and it broke the record that was set what, two days earlier two days prior. on Friday night? The only sporting events in the U.S. to draw a bigger TV audience since 2019 have been football, the World Cup, and the Olympics. Now let's see where it goes from here. Yeah. The March Madness tournament is finally over, but it brought lots of travelers to the Beehive State. Here's KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr. Hundreds of RVers traveled to Utah last month to enjoy the NCAA men's basketball tournament. Many of the visitors used the RV membership program Harvest Host, which allows travelers to park their RVs at local businesses inside cities rather than outside at campsites and helps them avoid a campsite fee. In return, RVers purchase goods from the local businesses where they are staying, which is what they did in Utah in March to help boost the local economy. Turns out some of the most popular RV spots were in Santa Quin and South Salt Lake. Two Weber State students say it's a miracle they're graduating together after a cardiac arrest almost cost Audrey Young her life. Allie Green had to rely on her respiratory therapy training when her friend collapsed during a study break. From looking at her airway down at her chest and she wasn't breathing and so CPR was the most important thing at the time. The students became close friends through the respiratory therapy program and they say now they are bonded for life. They are even applying to work at the same hospitals. Yeah, it's a great story. Still a lot of us on the roads out there this morning. We'll uh, get another look at traffic and weather together. Spend time with KSL News Radio and get a deeper understanding of the world around us. I do listen to KSL so much because you've got voices like Boyd Matheson. I listen to him every day. You can trust him. Inside Sources, weekdays 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. When it comes to your electrical system, do you know the warning signs to look for? What's up, everybody? I'm Mike Wilson with Any Hour Services, and it's okay if you don't know, but here are a few things that you might not even realize could be a sign of a bigger problem. Wall plates that are hot to the touch, discoloration around switches or outlets. If you hear crack or popping or buzzing around switches or outlets, a breaker that trips a lot, switches that feel loose when you operate them, if your lights dim or flicker when a major appliance comes on, if your plugs fall out of the wall easily. You know, you're not supposed to have to bend the prongs out on a plug just to get it to stay in the wall. If you notice any of these things, you should consider having a licensed electrician check your system out. If you don't know anyone, Any Hour Services has put together a radio-only special for any homeowners listening. One of our licensed electricians will perform a comprehensive electrical inspection and give you a full written report for only $29, but you have to mention this ad when you call. To schedule your comprehensive electrical inspection by a licensed electrician for only $29, call Any Hour Services at 801-443-7300. That's 801-443-7300. Any Hour Services. Peyton was a very kind and giving person. At 15 years old, he sustained life-threatening injuries from a motorcycle accident that took his life. His family felt like Peyton would want to save others and made the decision to donate his organs. Because of their generosity, his organs saved a two-year-old girl, a teenage boy, and others that were desperate in need of life-saving organs. Go to DonorConnect.life and read about what it takes to become a donor. Did you know many people think that they're too old or not in good enough health to be a donor? Anyone can be a donor. If you were told that it could save the life for someone close to you, or even a stranger, would you please donate? April is National Donate Life Month, the perfect time to check your driver's license to make sure you said yes to giving the gift of life. Or visit donorconnect.life to register as a donor. That's donorconnect.life. Give hope, heal life. This story of the 18-year-old in uh, Idaho, and where did we decide it was? Coeur d'Alene? Coeur d'Alene. Again, Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. 
uh, who had an allegiance to ISIS and was actively planning on attacks on churchgoers in that area. You know, we don't thank the FBI often enough. Yeah. I mean, we talk about, you know, when, when attacks happen, but the FBI, I mean, you know, he's innocent until proven guilty, of course, but the FBI says that, the, that they stopped this guy before he attacked churches. And we've had this conversation before where Brad Garrett has told us that they actually stop more of these than ever make the news headlines. Of so, course. So how many people's lives were saved? Yeah. it's uh, Luckily, we have Adam Small in Idaho. Mm-hmm. So it's a story we're going to keep a very close eye on for you this morning. 839, traffic and weather together, brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. And back to you, Andy. Amanda, in the Salt Lake Valley, it's kind of like the little haven in the middle of all the storm outside the valley, but you still got a few brake lights to deal with, including I-15 around 7200 South, 201 Freeway at 5600 West. And if you're on Bangor, other than a little stretch in uh, West Valley around 47 South and a little bit in South Jordan at 9800 South, that's a pretty good route all the way as far north as the airport. Heather? We had a crash southbound I-15 right near 1000 North. That was about an hour ago or so. It was quickly moved off the freeway, but we had a lot of delay from it. And now it looks like we've had some secondary crashes in that stop and go traffic. So there's a new crash right near the exit of 1000 North over on the right shoulder. And then a little further down the road near 600 North, you have looks like a disabled motorcyclist on the right shoulder as well. A lot of people have taken Legacy Parkway as an alternate, but that is causing slowdowns as they try to transition from Legacy onto the I-215 West Belt. Eric. The HOV lane still blocked northbound I-15 at Triumph Boulevard in Utah County, and that means the delays are still there, uh, and it uh, extends all the way back to just before Lehigh's Main Street if you're northbound, uh, and it won't you won't get clear of all of it. In fact, until you get up to the county line, practically, you've got uh, northbound slowdowns on Redwood Road for those seeking an alternate, and Mount View Corridor turning into 2100 North at Redwood. All of that is slow for eastbounders. Use Superior water and air for all your HVAC and plumbing needs. Call 974-9090 or visit superiorwaterandair.com. Superior Water and Air. Eric Butler in the KSL Traffic Center. A beautiful spring day is on tap with a high of 58 degrees and mostly sunny skies. Overnight we'll dip off to 41. Not that bad for this time of year. 63 sunny skies for your Wednesday. Thursday we're to 71 with sunny skies. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. Let me just do a quick refresher. Yep, things are starting to warm up. 39 now in Salt Lake City. It's the end of March Madness. What are we going to do, Tim? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll probably get more sleep, I'll tell you that. Yeah, we're going to talk to Mitch Harper about that. KSL Sports at BYU Insider just ahead on KSL. Stay with us streaming live at kslnewsradio.com and on the app for KSL News Radio. We're Utah's news traffic and weather station. A happy place comes in many colors. Whatever your color, bring happiness home with Serta Pro Painters and make your happy place your home. Serta Pro Painters, that's painting happy. During our spring sales event, special offers are available through April 30th. Schedule your home painting project today and bring happiness home. Each Serta Pro Painters business is independently owned and operated. Contractor license and registration information is available at certapro.com. It already feels like home. Transform your old, outdated kitchen with Half Price Granite. For a limited time, Half Price Granite is offering special pricing starting at $25 per square foot installed. That's lower than most big box stores. These prices are some of the lowest around. Granite, quartz, marble, and quartzite, all starting at $25 per square foot installed. Call 801-486-1700 or visit halfpricegranite.com. Half Price Granite, affordable luxury. You can host the best backyard barbecue. When you find a professional on Angie to make your backyard the best around. Connect with skilled professionals to get all your home projects done well. Inside to outside. Repairs to renovations. Get started on the Angie app or visit Angie.com today. You can do this when you Angie that. Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, clickgranger.com or just stop by. Granger. 
for the ones who get it done. KSL News Time, 845. The three things you need to know this hour. First, Utah's Airbnbs generated over $1.2 billion last year, supporting over 15,000 jobs and bringing in nearly $400 million in total tax revenue. I'm KSL News Radio's Alessandra Gurr. Second, opening arguments for the trial of Chad Daybell begin this week. Now that the jury has been selected, stay with KSL for updates. Third, a look at the drive with traffic and weather together. Got some delays still. I-15 through Lehigh northbound because of a crash near Timpanogos Highway. Southbound 15, couple of crashes and coming down into downtown. One on the north side of 600 North, one just after it. That's why traffic is still backed up coming out of North Salt Lake. I'm Andy Farnsworth in the KSL Traffic Center. The warming trend starts today and tops out Friday. I'm Matt Johnson. 39 degrees at the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. With a look at our top national stories. ABC News, I'm Sherry Preston. In court for sentencing right now, the parents who were convicted of involuntary manslaughter for their role in the mass shooting their son carried out in 2021. James and Jennifer Crumbly were tried separately but are being sentenced together as the first parents in the nation to be convicted in connection with their child carrying out a mass shooting. Ethan Crumbly killed four students and wounded seven others at Oxford High School in Michigan in November 2021. His parents convicted of manslaughter after prosecutors argued they were negligent in buying Ethan the gun used in the shooting and failed to intervene to stop him from carrying out his rampage. ABC's Derek Dennis says the Crumbleys each face up to 15 years behind bars. Under arrest in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, an 18-year-old who the FBI says was inspired by ISIS to carry out killings at local churches. Agents say the attack was thwarted by investigators. Hamas promising to study the ceasefire proposal on the table now as Norfolk Southern agreeing to $600 million class action lawsuit over the fiery train derailment in East Palestine, Ohio. This is ABC News. Well, March Madness is officially over. We're mourning in here <laughs> with uh, UConn taking home the men's NCAA Tournament Championship title. Joining us live is our KSL Sports BYU insider and college basketball mega fan, Mitch Harper. <laughs> Mitch, what are we going to do with ourselves? <laughs> it's it's now turning to the off season, and and uh, but it, it was a fun March Madness once again. Uh, not as many storylines as far as the underdogs this year as more chalk, but. You know, the best team ends up on top once again. UConn is clearly a dynasty in the sport. Yeah, NC State made a nice run at it there, got to the Final Four. That got some extra attention. And when you combine that with what happened on the women's side, I would think the NCAA has to be thrilled. They have to be. And, and you know, basketball is, is a sport that I think, uh, you know, it c- connects with a lot of the younger audience and, and sports fans. Uh, you know, when it comes to social media and kind of hype videos, they really connect with the sport. And, uh, you know, this product, I think, only continues to grow, especially in this name, image, and likeness and transfer portal era. I think the, the game continues to evolve and people keep tuning in. Mitch, do you think that the surge in interest in women's college basketball will transfer to the WNBA or does it not transfer? I don't feel like it transfers, honestly. I feel like college basketball, there's a bigger platform than – than the WNBA because of the brands of the schools, the connection there, and and also just the how these media uh, you know networks, you know ESPN really amplifies the their March Madness coverage on all their platforms, whereas the WNBA just doesn't get the spotlight. And and part of that maybe is due to just when it lands on the calendar, being in summer when people are on vacation and they're away from their you know television, they're not consuming games like they typically do in fall and winter. So. Uh, I, I, I struggle to think it's it's going to carry. But if there is one person that's going to generate that interest like they did, you know, when they first started back in the mid 90s, it would be Caitlin Clark, because, you know, since the league first started, they haven't had a star like her since then. Well, I'll tell you, and I don't remember her first name. I'm sure you do. But Tarazi, uh, who was such a great. Diana Tarazi. Yeah. Uh, now playing in the WNBA. She's already fired shots <laughs> at uh, Caitlin. She said, look. Uh, you're not going to be playing little 18-year-old girls here. You're going to be facing these women that have been playing basketball for a long time. So uh, lower your expectations. I mean, that even uh, leads up to a little buildup, I think. No question. And, you know, having her go up against women who have been playing for, you know, 10-plus years, you know, there, there's great international basketball in, in the women's game. So these, these women play year-round uh, professionally. So it, it's going to be – a huge step up like Kaylin Clark dominated the college scene with against, you know, 18 to 22 year olds. Now let's see how she fares against the best of the best in, in the WNBA. And it should be fun. I'm curious to see, you know, what ends up happening with, 
you know, her partnerships with Nike? Does she get her own shoe line like Sabrina Ionescu with the New York Liberty? She, she's going to be everywhere. I think if there is one person that can really generate the interest with the WNBA, it's going to be her. So now we turn our attention to spring football. That's right. So, you know, spring football is is in the rearview mirror for BYU. They're locked. They're they're done. And, you know, Kalani Sataki was just at Disneyland last week. They took a week off. And uh, the countdown to the football season is really on. No no answers yet at quarterback for BYU. It's still going to be between Jake Retzlaff and Gary Bohannon. But, you know, BYU is is uh, a team that's going to have to develop from within. That's going to be the theme with this team as they retain most of their roster. Now they got to get players to, to really take step forward if they want to get back to the postseason. We've got to let you go. But did they do a fan event for spring football and I just missed it? Or did that not happen this year? No spring game this year. And even Aaron Roderick, offensive coordinator, said – he almost felt that was a good thing, but they did have uh, an alumni day, which the fans got to connect with at the alumni game, but a little bit disappointing, honestly, because I feel like they should have gave this fan base the chance to, to see these quarterbacks, to see this team up close with their own eyes and make their own evaluation, but no spring game this year for mm-hmm. BYU. All right, Mitch, we'll keep uh, following your reporting here on KS on this radio. Mitch Harper with us on the In-Depth at 15 and 45. All right, let's check what's left of the drive here. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents a gallon. How are we looking, Andy? A couple of slow spots right now. Looks like maybe a crash or some malfunctioning traffic lights, 123rd South at 550 West. Uh, it's a huge backup that goes all the way down to the river bottoms, almost back to 1300 West on 123rd. We've got some delays on I-15 between Bangor and Bluffdale and some northbound 15 slowdowns just before the 215 overpass in Murray and Midvale. Heather? Speeds are improving just a bit on Legacy Parkway as you transition onto I-215's West Belt, but you're still slightly below the posted speed limit all the way to the I-80 West turnoff to get to the airport. I-15 remains your worst traffic right now as you come from Center Street and North Salt Lake all the way into downtown. That's due to several accidents as it have occurred. A couple of them are still over on the right shoulder. Eric? Long slowdown stretch northbound I-15 in Utah County from Lee Heights Main Street all the way up to Point of the Mountain. The the center or focal point of all of this is a crash at uh, Tem- uh, Triumph Boulevard uh, just before the overpass, uh, and that's blocking off the HOV lane. Uh, back behind this, you do have slowing through Linden from 1600 North and Orm up to Pleasant Grove Boulevard exit, and you do have uh, your usual eastbound slowing on 2100 North and Lehigh from Redwood Road over to 2300 West. Monster winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. But don't wait for a disaster. Go to the Masters at Master Roof utah.com to schedule your free windstorm assessment today eric butler in the ksl traffic center ksl 7 a forecast this will likely be our longest stretch of beautiful weather yet this spring 58 today mostly sunny skies will go to 63 sunny skies on your wednesday we keep those blue skies into thursday 71 77 degrees folks put it in the calendar on friday partly cloudy skies Beautiful start to the weekend, Saturday, 74, partly cloudy, 69 with a mix of sun and clouds on Sunday. And how about Monday? Mostly cloudy, but still not that cold, 62. From the KSL Weather Center, I'm Matt Johnson. 39 degrees, a seven-day forecast brought to you by Performance Automotive Bountiful. We're in trouble with Ike Osby and our promotion department for shirking our responsibilities here. (laughs) We forgot to give you the jazz word. (laughs) Uh, But there's still time. So here's the good news. Jazz are taking on the Denver Nuggets. You know already that you just text the word jazz, J-A-Z-Z, to 57500. That gets your name in once for some lower bowl tickets. But here's a second shot. The word is Rocky. R-O-C-K-Y, Rocky, as in the Jazz and the Nuggets are separated by the Rocky Mountains. So text the word Rocky. Good luck. Hope you enjoy the game tonight. Our news time is 8.53. When you think of Utah's homeless, who do you see? They are people with names and faces. And many are in dire circumstances. They are men and women and sometimes children. Many are living on the street in a car or in a shelter. Some choose to be homeless, most do not. Many experience the challenges of addiction or mental illness. All are vulnerable. Homelessness is a crisis, one that affects us all. Utah is building a coalition of community leaders and concerned citizens united to end the plight of homelessness. Homelessness should not mean 
hopelessness. Learn more at projecthumandignity.org. A message from Utah Impact Partnership. Put the equity in your home to work with a home equity line of credit and get 6.49% APR for the first six months. Learn more at cypresscu.com. This is Lisa Nichols from Intermountain Health with Your Life, Your Health. Throughout pregnancy and prenatal appointments, expectant mothers learn about important information during each trimester that culminates in childbirth. However, what may not immediately come to their attention is the postpartum recovery period that follows giving birth. The postpartum recovery period is a crucial and often overlooked phase of a woman's journey through childbirth. It refers to the time after giving birth, typically lasting about six weeks, during which a woman may experience various changes as she recovers from pregnancy and childbirth. Like prenatal visits that keep mothers informed about their well-being during pregnancy, the postpartum checkup holds significant importance. It provides an opportunity for an OBGYN or certified nurse midwife to assess a mother's complete physical, mental, and emotional health. It's essential for mothers to prioritize self-care during this time and communicate openly with healthcare providers about any concerns or challenges she may be facing. Recognizing the significance of the postpartum recovery period can contribute to a healthier and smoother transition into motherhood. It takes a mom's body six weeks to recover from childbirth. Some mothers may feel like they're doing fine and don't need to go to their postpartum checkup, but this is when a provider can check to see if a mom's body has fully healed from the labor and delivery process. These visits also allow a mother's care team to address any concerns or complications. I'm Lisa Nichols with Intermountain Health on KSL News Radio. Watching Watch. Utah's Money, oh. brought to you by Trajan Wealth, your trusted local fiduciary advisors, TrajanWealth.com. Just time to check the markets. Dow is down 310 now. That's eight-tenths of a percent. We're at 38589 S&P's off 39 The NASDAQ down 103 All right, we'll get one more look at the drive with traffic and weather together next. Hot Tub Factory Outlet and Backyards of America is offering an incredible deal. We'll pay the sales tax on every hot tub, swim spa, infrared sauna, and cold plunge sold. Now through April 15th, say goodbye to pesky extra charges and hello to unbeatable savings. We're your local hotspot for hot tubs, swim spas, infrared saunas, and cold plunge. We're not just any store. We're two local guys dedicated to